All right, we're live. Thank you everyone for coming and watching uh, the first painting stream on this channel. I'm really, really excited about this. Uh, and I, I've said this a few times in the other live stream, um, our Monday night live stream, Tuesday this week. Um, but this whole method that Eric and I are gonna be doing is based on um, Ariel Olivetti's uh, uh, tutorial. Where where can you find that, Eric? I, That's at Domestica. Domestica. I can, I can paste the link into the uh, chat. Okay. I wanted to, and I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but <laughs> I, I actually didn't get the, the uh, link for this up and the thumbnail up for it until just about an hour before it started. I completely forgot. It's been busy times here. I actually was up until six o'clock this morning finishing a page. I slept a good part of the day and then I thought, oh no, I gotta. So, but here we are. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to take my camera off here and show you guys my picture. We've got Eric's picture up here already. Uh, and you guys have seen mine. It's the same one that I put up on the community tab. So, uh, yeah. So we've got Kenny Wang here. We've got Charles Petrie, who is not going to be painting. He said I saw that earlier, which, you know, not cool. But <laughs> Lance Dubois is here. Jeff Wheeler. Anyway, thank you, everyone, for, for coming and watching. So we're just going to jump right into it, Eric. What do you say? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we've got it drawn in. I drew this pretty lightly. I don't know if you can tell looking at the, the drawing, um, but I tried not to press too hard. And that's tough for me because I, I tend to press too hard. But uh, I've got a black colored pencil. So, and it really doesn't matter what kind you have. I think I have a color soft. It really doesn't matter. Uh, any black colored pencil is fine. And the reason you use a black colored pencil is it doesn't reject the paint the way that... Um, uh, a regular, whoop, I broke it already, the way that a regular pencil will. Yeah, there's a lot of... And also, it's much darker. You can see right away. Yeah, there can be a lot of oil in uh, graphite pencils, and that can repel water. Yeah, something I didn't know and something that I've fought with over the years. I've I've painted that way before. And so this is going to be a bit of a process I'm going to have to basically go through, and, and Eric, too, we're going to be uh, essentially inking this with a colored pencil. Um it's not going to take anywhere near as long as is doing finished inks for uh you know what i would normally do on the live stream it's going to be looser but the better you make this stage the easier the actual painting is because it the painting really is based on uh the drawing with because i broke my pencil i'm gonna sharpen it already and so this is going to be i'm basically just getting my lines short in and I don't need to be, worry about being dark here either. As a matter of fact, I want to be fairly dark because when I put a few washes over it, it really, really fades it. And then I actually end up going back in with my uh, my black colored pencil and reconstituting uh, a lot of the shadows. So it's going to be a bit of a colored pencil, this stage here, breaking it again, and then um, some washes of paint. We'll start with a, an overall wash and then some color block in. Back with the colored pencil to reconstitute uh, constitute some detail and then some finished painting details. And it really, ultimately, I mean, the washes cover the whole thing, but it is very much a colored pencil approach. Yeah, with the, um, the process that uh, David and I have been uh, playing around with, uh, one of the big differences is Ariel Olivetti will, uh, in, instead of shading more with black pencil um, and going as dark as, as as we like to do, he'll actually do that with with paint. Um, but we found that you know, I mean, he's a he's a master. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> that's really that, totally yeah. what it comes down to. I really I think we're I I tried it this way the first time. It really really worked. Very consistent re results and. I'm so much more comfortable with a pencil. I I can imagine that probably you would graduate from this approach, you think, fairly quickly, maybe. I, I don't know. I just really like it. I can't imagine uh, switching it out for paint because it also, the, the big benefit about pencil that I really like is it gives me a graininess. It gives a, a texture to the image that you don't get with paint. So we have a super chat from Daniel Castelli. Thank you so much, 499. I really appreciate it, Daniel. He says, yes, I've been waiting for months to see you paint. Don't let me down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. And I can tell you that um, 
I've been painting for a long time. My problem is that I never get a chance to paint. And so it's always a bit of a, uh, sometimes they just will not work out and I just, I can't get it to work. Uh, I just, I don't have the kind of experience that um, I'd like to have with it. So I'm by no means a professional doing this. Sometimes they work out really well and I'm really happy. And unfortunately that's just not always. So we'll see how this one goes. I really think that this process takes away so much of the guesswork though. Right. Yep. I agree. Yeah. I mean, the pencil brings familiarity. Uh, yeah. And I, a thing I like about this approach also is uh, you'll find a lot of art teachers will say, don't ever use black. You know, black is a color that it's not a color, you know, and you should always mix your, like if you're, if you want to mix, um, my, my sharpener cord is too short. <laughs> Somehow to reach over. Um, if you want to mix uh, red and mute it so it's not so red, then you need to use green. And that's fine, and that certainly works. I break it. I, I get three lines out of it. I break it. Um, but black also works. Black actually works very, very well, especially in a wash where it doesn't get overpowering. Oh, Jimmy's here. So um, I, I find I like to keep my color mixes as simple as possible. I don't want to be uh fighting with and uh there are times i'll, I'll use complementary colors but for the most part unless i'm mixing yellow yellow is my one real exception because when you mix black with yellow you get green but other than that i use black it works yeah and especially with this with this glazing approach it, i mean it really gives you a nice hue shift even though you've put that that black down um yeah, yeah i mean it just works it works great and uh it's it's like David said, it's repeatable. You don't have to, it just removes guesswork for you. Yeah, it absolutely does. And so I was thinking to myself, you know, maybe we should really do this stage before the, uh, before the stream, because there's a certain amount of time that, and this isn't really painting. This is really drawing. But the fact is that this is so fundamental to the whole process, this stage. So I thought, okay, I really shouldn't, uh, scrimp on it so we got the whole thing here and this uh i'm going to tell you guys right now could end up being a bit of a long stream I'm going to try to you know what I've got another black that's a color soft in there it's just a soft tip and it's... here's what i'm dealing with good luck finding anything in this mess and i don't even know if it's in here Come on. I don't see it. Uh, who knows? It's under something. I'm just going to keep going. Uh, color soft colored pencils are, they're great. They're very subtle. They break easily. And I can actually get more detail than this. Like I, I'm going a little bit thick and simple with my line, but I've also found that once you paint over it enough, um, I'll be able to, to refine my detail just a little bit more as we go along. So kind of not too worried about that. I don't want my line to get too fat, but. So Dan Genovese says he's using Faber-Castell polychrome. Is that what you're talking about, David, the polychromes? Uh, these are color soft. I have polychromo somewhere. I don't, and again, you know, I moved and uh, I've been really reluctant to take things out of boxes because I've got my wall started. They're, they're still kind of in process. And until I have my office finished, I don't want a million things laying all over the place. So, uh, I can't really put anything away right now. So yeah, who knows where my colors are, or my 
polychromos are. I know I've got some though, and they're very, very good. I think probably for this purpose, better than this. But ultimately, again, you could have the cheapest colored pens. Like it really doesn't matter. Yeah. The tools are really not so important with this. And in a way, they kind of never are, but. Yeah, I'm busy using the Liquitex Basics, which, you know, uh, there's, there's certain folks would say, you know, those are student grade, what are you doing, kind of thing. But if it's good enough for Ariel Olivetti, it's good enough for me. I mean, he in that course, he, he painted, I mean, he painted a masterpiece. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I'd be hard pressed to tell you what, you know, what specific paint students or otherwise he used. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think, um, you know, uh, colors are all about uh, tonality. Basically, the you want to uh, make sure that you're... If, if you took your picture and made it black and white, that it holds together and it, it looks good. And if, if you can achieve that, then the colors are all really secondary to that. It's most important that your values work. And Absolutely. And so, yeah, I, I don't really worry too much about the colors. As a matter of fact... Um, I ordered paint uh, in order to do this ages ago, ages ago. And I cannot get um, cadmium red. I had it ordered. I just, it, it's not coming. And so instead I'm actually using pyro red. Uh, and don't worry about that. If you're watching because this just means my red won't be as nice as yours. It is the same. It's just, it's, it's not as high quality as cadmium. So if you've got cadmium, you'll be better off. Ken Early says, Greg Staples uses the same method, and he's been doing it for many years, too, and still uses a black colored pencil. You know what? I have searched Greg Staples trying to find, like, all of my favorite artists that work this way. Glenn Fabry, uh, Greg Staples, Simon Bisley, obviously, uh, um, Jim Murray, trying to find out anything that I could, and it's very, very difficult. Michael Johnson's query says, Dave, has anyone ever told you without your user rendering on a piece, your work favors Mike Turner? That's really cool. <laughs> well, thank you. You know what? We we kind of came up together, very similar influences. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, going back to what Dave was saying, values is definitely the most important thing. Um, and, and again, this approach and this step, you know, getting your, your values down first and then worried about colors just works so well. I mean, it's, it's kind of like the digital approach of adding, a, adding an overlay or color layer. It's, I mean, it's pretty much analogous. Um, and that's why it's such a popular method. Um, and, you know, David and I were talking recently about it. There's a reason why colorblind people can, can function very well is because values is the most important thing. So um, definitely don't, you know, don't, don't skimp on this step. And, um, you know, a trap that I've been falling into a lot uh, is never going dark enough uh, with your painting, especially your base, you know, your, your base layers. Uh, it's easier to rescue yourself, I've found, than if you don't have a dark enough base layer, it's very difficult to pull highlights out and lights. So, yeah, you know, it, yeah, it is possible to go too dark, which I did last time. But that's always much easier to rescue than it is to go if you're too light, for sure. Right. I, I mean, obviously, you, you can fix either one. But I find for me, being too light, it makes it very, very difficult. I'm already too lazy to even follow my pencil lines here. It's the worst. There's a few uh, super chats there. Uh, would this method work with gouache? Uh, yes. It, oh, you know what? Okay, I take it back. Yes and no. It would work with gouache. You could certainly go over with colored pencils. You could do all the same thing. You could work thinly. But the, the one thing about gouache is you have to be very careful because you can pick it back up. Whereas acrylic is... Uh, it, it dries um, so that you can't you can't lift it back out. So I would be a little reluctant uh, doing a lot of glazes with, with gouache. Uh, and gouache is also incredibly difficult to uh, blend. 
yeah. there are artists who do beautiful stuff with it, but it's a tough medium. Yeah, I mean, you you get acrylic gouache, which basically freezes each layer in place. But at that point, you know, it almost feels like you're using acrylic anyway. I didn't uh, know that was a thing. Yeah. Let me see these super chats here real quick. Uh, don't know if we missed any. If we missed any, let us know. Um, it's a bit tricky painting and <laughs> reading, or at, at least getting ready to paint. Uh, Eight one modus. I haven't painted ascension cover on my wall. Issue eleven. I always mm -hmm. thought you painted that. Looks a little busily inspired. Well, it's very much busily inspired. That's actually the first painting that I ever did for uh, anything in a comic. It was a real struggle. I probably spent two weeks on that thing. Uh, I just yeah, had no idea what I was doing. And th this is what, I mean, th that would have been 98. And it just really makes me wish. Uh, you know what? You you have to take choices in your career. And for me, uh, you know, I've, <laughs> I have no regrets. But at the same time, had I taken a path where I was painting all the time and that's really the only thing I was doing, I'd be in a very different place right now. It'd be much more comfortable. It would be, you know, I'd be better. And as it is, I, I, I feel like I'm still a real amateur with this just because I've never had the, the time to really get comfortable and really develop a, a process that consistently works. Another thing too, Eric is, uh, if you paint all the time, you start to get a really good sense of how to mix your paints. You get exactly like bang on perfect. Right. If you don't, that doesn't come. And I still like I'll, I'll mix a paint. Oh, it's too light. And I darken it. Oh, it's too dark. Like it's, it's a problem. Yeah. I mean, because it, it's such a tactile process, you know, the muscle memory is definitely a thing. Yeah. Uh, when David and I were, the, our, our last session, I, yeah, I thought it was pretty cool because we started. Uh, we started realizing the exact point where you get where your brush becomes dry. It's kind of like this magical zone <laughs> for adding yeah. light. Yeah, and, uh, it was pretty neat experience in that. Uh, yeah, Kevin Mandel has a, a super chat for ten dollars. Thank you so much, Kevin. Says evening, guys. Looking forward to seeing your whole process here and how these come out. David, your last piece you posted was amazing. Glad to see Eric showcasing his talents. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. Yeah, this is uh, uh. So much fun to do. I I love doing this. I love painting. I know uh, Eric has been kind of sweating this one a little bit. It's uh, you've never really drawn in front of people like this before, and now not only are you drawing, but you're painting <laughs> something. Yeah, that, you know, I mean the closest like, I've come is some conventions, but nowhere uh, nowhere to this scale. This is uh, pretty daunting, but I'm having a blast. Yeah. yeah, and so you know the fact is for both of us. Uh, I, you know, I feel like in the interest of full disclosure, these things could totally fall apart on us. It could absolutely happen. Hopefully that won't happen, but. <clears throat> All right. I'm just about at a point. I've got it kind of lined in just enough that uh, I'm about ready to start to do some of my shading. I think for the background, I had a, a flag here. I'm going to have to kind of let that go because, um, I don't you know, know if you did that flag, I'd be able to catch up. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> no, I'm going to start, no. start with my face because that's really more where my, um, I want that to work and I can just kind of cue everything else off of that. And so the easiest thing for me to do, this is so much like uh, just plain um, shading with, with pencil or with, uh, with a brush. I just start with the, the places where it's most obvious. Um, that it's going to be dark. So around the eyes here, uh, under the lid here, I'm going to cast a bit of a shadow under his mask here, under here, start to catch some light under his chin. And I'm very tempted to do a bit of a double light and not just light it flat. Uh, and I think I'm going to. And this could be another place where uh, this could be a fiasco. Trent Early uh, has a super chat for $10. Thank you so much, Trent. He says, I'd imagine Greg Staples and Bisley, who I believe taught Staples, would be super flattered. I bet they'd uh, surely talk process technique with you. I still love your paintings above all. You and Frazetta, well, thank you so much. And yeah, I would be absolutely thrilled to be able to have that conversation. 
Um, I, it's something I've been pursuing for so many years. There's just there's a look to the the paintings that they have been able to do that uh, nobody else replicates. And I certainly haven't been able to. And so far, this is my best stab at it, I feel like. But uh, and, and really, for the longest time, when I would paint, it would it would be. Uh, it would be just a pencil drawing and then I would go in with paint and I'd have to recreate everything with paint, which is, you know, it's a huge challenge. Sorry, this is one of those stages where I just hit you with my tongue out and go for it. So, uh, yeah. Pretty quiet. Well, and for my part, this is the slowest part of the, the picture. I want to make sure the face is basically kind of working. So I've totally gone dead silent too. Yeah, so Jazz Noir Studio says, I'm partially colorblind and that's what they told me in art school. Focus on tones. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I am. I, um... I, I don't know that it's even really a disadvantage because like for clothing, you know, you can mix a lot of colors if the tones work actually same way. Not that I'm any kind of expert on clothing, you know, but. So yeah, this next stage for me, what I'm doing is I'm getting my my basic shadow shapes kind of blocked in. And then I'm going to soften it more the way I did here. I don't want this to be too dark. I want it to be dark enough because again, it will lighten with the paint. Kevin Mandevil has a super chat for $10. Thank you so much again, Kevin. David, you should think about doing some painted pieces for your creator own project. No idea if you plan on crowdfunding at all, but they would make for some amazing incentive, incentives for supporters. So, I, Meredith is better at this than me. Uh, yeah, well, thank you. I am not crowdfunding, no. Um, but I'd like to anyway. And I've been kind of, I've been pushing to do that. And I've gotten permission, actually. So um, I'm definitely going to be doing a little bit of painting for it. And by, by got permission, it really is so much like, a, yeah, sure, you want to do that? Go ahead, why not? You know, but... Yeah, I'd like to paint more. And actually, um, I just talked to, and I can't say it kills me. I want to just say what it is, but I talked to a, a very good artist friend of mine who's working on a creator, a creator own project, and I was going to do a cover for him, and he just asked if I would paint it. And I said, yeah, I will. Absolutely. This is... I don't know how many times in my career, Eric, I've thought, I'm just going to quit and start painting. That's it. <laughs> and then I do a few paintings. I'm like, oh, no, I'm buried. Like, it's such a hard process. A couple paintings don't work, and I just want to go back to a pencil. I just. Yeah, I definitely feel like, it, it, it. Yeah, it feels like an extreme sport sometimes. But uh, yeah. but I think that's why it's so fun, too, is, you know, it's uh, there's just so many variables, so many. I don't know. It's fun. It's uh you yeah, definitely feel feel pretty accomplished, you know, uh, when it pans out. Yeah.
And so in Ariel's course, he said, uh, you really want to be careful with your pencil. You want to keep your um, softening very clean and uniform. So I'm kind of going in circles here and I'm trying to be very controlled with it because any detail that you leave here can be very difficult to clean up in the pencil or in the final painting, which is true. I tend to kind of, um, and this is a result of me not being that skilled. I uh, almost don't have any trouble if, if I throw lines where I shouldn't because I end up having to do so much correcting work that it kind of works out in the end a little bit. But I can imagine the more skilled you are with this, the, the more that really, really matters. You want to not give yourself things to fix later on. Once I have the head finished here, this is all going to go pretty quickly. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm anticipating David just speeding through it. So I'm. I'm, <laughs> I'm like. I'm like go go go. It's a race. David, David's a master at light and shadow. So. Well, this is where you, you see Alex Ross do these kinds of drawings, these kinds of pictures, and it's just stunning what he can do. But you know, uh, he's a genius, first of all. And um, he, this is what he does, you know? So I try and give myself a little bit of uh, forgiveness on it, you know? Try and be a little easy on myself. Well, um, I mean, your, your light and shadow is phenomenal. I think, you know, it, it, uh, the way it, it accent, accentuates your line work is just, you know, I think that's, something that resonates with a lot of people too, is just the, uh, the command of a light and shadow and. Well, thank you. Awesome, yeah. This is where things get easy. I'm just going to start hammering stuff in. And so I've got a, my main light coming here. I've got a side light coming here. I should really be darker in some places here where I really want to differentiate. Uh, and I like a darker painting. And this, again, is really me trying to paint like, you know, Simon Bisley, Greg Staples, and that whole kind of English school. I love that look. And it is very much based on a dark kind of a look. So... Eric, this is where we miss Meredith. I tried to talk Meredith into doing this. Uh, yeah, you know what her response was, right? I don't even have to tell you. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly what she did. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all good. I, um, I think once this once this stage is over, it'll be a it'll start getting a little bit easier to talk, I guess. You think uh, so? I don't know. No, it's gonna be like that. Yeah, we're both gonna sit here and. This is where we need music. Do, 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 do. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
Lyle Wyatt says some of his paintings turn out better than others, but his customers always seem to be satisfied. And you know what? Uh, that's really, that's great. So that's what it comes down to. You always want to push yourself and do the, the best work that you can and be happy with it. But when your client is pleased with what you're doing, that's a good place to be. So for his stomach here, I'm not going to worry about being darker or lighter. These are going to be my white stripes. These will be my red stripes. It doesn't matter because red is inherently a darker color, uh, obviously, than white, you know. And so it will darken on its own. So I don't need to... Um, I don't need to darken. So I can just go through and and uh, do my my stomach lighting without having to worry about about different kind of kinds of tones. And this is another great thing about this method, something that I really like is I can things like that where different materials will have different levels of of uh, lightness or darkness. I can just leave off for now. It's not important. So I'm actually going a lot darker than um, some of our previous sessions. So uh, hoping that pans out. <laughs> it will because the previous times we've done this, you've had to. You yeah, know, had a venue problem. Yeah, but I end up going darker anyway. Right. Yeah. So it'll just kind of save some steps. It is a color soft pencil. Just bear in mind, it does not matter. This is actually the pencil that I could find. I've got another one. It's just a regular one. And it's better for this because these break so easily. Um, but this is what I could find. There are some things that matter. I would say um, the uh, 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 matte medium matters. That makes a big difference. Absolutely. And the brushes matter. Now, it doesn't. It doesn't matter in the sense that you can you can paint with any kind of a brush. You're going to find it easier to paint with some types of brushes, oh, for sure. So it does matter. But the color pencil, I don't, I don't think it matters. Yeah, the nice, the nice thing about the matte medium uh, that David found found out is, um, uh, David actually started experimenting with ul ultra matte medium. And well, uh, the reason, sorry, sorry Eric. okay, oh, okay. Well, I was gonna say, yeah. So this is what I'm using here. It's ultra matte medium. Uh, don't worry about that if you don't have it, because I'm only using it because of the paper I ordered. This is smooth paper. I could not get, vel I couldn't, my order, I just couldn't get it to come in. So, um, and I had this laying around and what this does is it just, as I'm adding medium, it adds a little bit of tooth also. It's got a slight tooth to it. And so um, I'm actually fairly, I, I really have no tooth right now. It's not ideal. It's I would rather have a little bit more tooth for my pencil to lay this stuff down. But as I add medium, it, it kind of, brings back just a little bit of tooth. But if you're using vellum paper, you're good. Yeah, because, uh, you know, as, as David mentioned before, you the idea is to keep on, you know, um, going over these shadows with, with glazes just to make sure that at every step of the glaze, your your values make sense. If, if they don't make sense, you know, you, you darken certain areas that you need to. And, um, you know, like you said, Having having the mat down um, allows you to place colored pencil um, down again. You know, if you were using glossy medium, you would have you would have trouble because you know there's no there's no tooth to it, so your pencil is just going to glide right over it. Yeah, which is what's happening to me right now a little bit. But yeah, especially with with paint, um, if you build up, and this is a thing also that I love about this method is. Uh, you never build up so much paint that it starts to interfere with your colored pencil, which really absolutely can happen. Uh, and has happened to me more often than not by far. Uh, I'll have so much paint down. If I try and soften something with colored pencil, it just won't, it won't lay down. I'm trying to, it's like painting on a plastic surface. 
it well it really is a plastic surface and here's me saying i i'm not going to darken anything down i'll just let the materials do it and i'm going darker here i know <laughs> I have to admit, for the shield, I'm making this up. Like I'm making this whole thing up, so it's <laughs> likely to be a total disaster. Well, it looks pretty good for me. I'm just gonna let it fade out from there. Now, here on his chest, I know I want a shadow to be here. I'm just gonna block one in. That's just gonna be dark. It's easier for me to draw my scales in and then just block in my shadows after. I want this to be dark here. Kind of here. And then I can go ahead and finish my scales to, to complement it all, but this works pretty well rather than fighting with it. And again, uh, go a little heavier with this line here. I think I'm going to try to get some of that base turned down that we spoke about. Um, another problem I was having was leaving too much of the paper white. Um, again, it just you'll just be battling a tone problem later on. So, so just re-emphasizes how just important this step is. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> All right. Are you ready to paint already? Nope. Okay. Getting Good. there. <laughs> so now I'm just going to go ahead and add line weights to my scales. Seems like more work than it is. It's really not too bad. I'm so glad you did those scales. Slowing me down, that's for sure. Helps me catch up. I uh, hope there hasn't been any more super chats. Let's double check. Did you get Steve Kang's? I don't know. What was it? Uh, Steve Kang, uh, thank you for this channel. I think I've learned more from your live streams and tutorials than I did in art school. I find myself pushing myself artistically as a result. Amen. Amen oh. to that. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I didn't see that one. I missed that one. Thank you so much. I really appreciate did it. Did you get One Mighty R's? No. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Uh, hey, Dave and Eric, you're both awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Mighty. Make sure. Daniel Castelli, are we going to be able to see how you mix the paint, how much water and medium you're using, et cetera? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the most important thing I would say is loading your paintbrush properly. Um, again, it's a feel thing. I'm actually kind of nervous because 
this is the biggest size painting that I've done and uh, I'm having to use bigger brushes so loading the paintbrush is a bit you know take takes a bit more work but uh, yeah yeah what's nice about this is because you're adding medium which extends you know extends the paint dilutes it it's kind of hard to mess up in a way because because the layer is so thin I mean yeah sure you can go dark but um, the layer is so thin that if there's a problem you can just glaze right over that one um, and you'll know you'll know when you when you have the mixture right and uh, something else I do is I you know I have a piece of paper next to me here that I keep as just a you know, to put some swatches down and test my mixture etc so you know put something down next to you put it down on the paper and see how it looks and then take it from there yeah and what I can do too is uh, I actually um, this is my paper that's just sitting behind I always just pour my paint right out on, on top of this and mix on other paper which is a mistake because your paint dries so fast, but that's how I've been doing it. So what I'll do is I'll just run over, I'll grab another piece of paper. Uh, again, not the way you want to do it, but whatever. And so I'll just, I'll bring it over here so you can see me do it. Uh, and it really is a feel thing. It really is. So I, I think, you know, a couple of times you kind of, and also I don't just mix paint and then go right to the picture. I kind of do a couple of test strokes and I know the kind of consistency I'm looking for, for different things. And there are different with washes, you want a different consistency than you do for more of a covering paint. Uh, so, yeah, not a big deal at all. And I really want to go pretty dark with this detail that I'm doing right now, entirely because I don't want to have to paint this stuff. I do not want to be, I kind of screwed up the scale. Uh. I, yeah, I don't want to be painting scales at all. So what I'm going to do, this is just a black layer. I'm going to wash color over it nice and dark, and then I can just pick out a few highlights. And it should, <laughs> barring catastrophe, <laughs> work out well. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> and I know what you guys are thinking right now. Wait a minute. I thought we were here to paint. <laughs> like what's going on here nobody's painting painting with pencil but this is uh and i the amount of time that i lost trying to learn how to paint when um if i would have known this you know it would have put me so many years ahead uh and you know you can really see it you look at uh, norman rockwell his paintings are really realized in grayscale and then from there, he goes on and starts to put on color and glazes. And that's actually exactly how Drew Struzan, Drew Struzan, for those of you that aren't aware, is um, a, uh, he's, he's the biggest uh, movie poster artist of all time. He, he did the Indi Indiana Jones movie posters, um, Star Wars, anyway, a ton of them. And the way he would work is he would do this with a colored pencil, draw his whole picture in and use brush so he wasn't, you know, killing himself doing this. By the way, I don't know if it's, if you can see this, but I've actually got some, I've got some shadowing of uh, the places where I, I drew my pencil, even though I tried to go light, it's actually picking up because it creates a slight little divot and that can be a real headache to try and lose. And so I tried to go light for that reason, but yeah, that, that absolutely happens. The darker you go, the more you'll have that happen. Anyway, he would do this whole stage and then just use airbrush and airbrush his local colors and then use actual colored pencil over top of it. Tagomo Model Works has a super chat for $10. Thank you so much. He says, Drew Struzan has a DVD that shows his process of creating the Hellboy poster. It's a very similar technique to this. Just search Struzan Art Lesson DVD on Amazon. Great video. And yes, I, and I have seen it. I actually, I bought it. My problem is, Tagomo, that I am so convinced. I have been so convinced. I love the Simon Bisley style. And I've got it in my head. You would think I would know better, you know, after so many years of being a professional and, and you answer questions where I'm thinking, no, 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 this stuff doesn't matter. But I, I thought, okay, but that's not how Simon Bisley paints. So, <laughs> so I don't get from it what I think I should. Yeah. I don't really want to use airbrush. Um, not because I think there's anything wrong with it. Uh, I just gum up my airbrush constantly. It's such a hassle to use those things. I've dropped it. I, I couldn't even use it if I wanted to right now. I've dropped it a couple of times and the pin in there bends and yeah, it's toast.
bring this shadow out just a little bit further. Kind of give him a shadow from his face. That's looking great, dude. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, yours is looking great. It's coming along. It's almost uh, it's almost done. Lysol Hedison, yeah. and I apologize, Lysol, if I said the name wrong. He said, have you tried Pablo Caron? Karen de Ash. <laughs> I can't say it. Pablo Karen de, de Ash. Oh, I've read yeah. black colored pencil. It's awesome. They're my favorite pencils. I have not. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'll have to so give those a try. So that's my sister, Liesl. Oh, yeah, yeah. The uh, those those pencils are pretty good. Um, I actually have a white one, and uh, it, it lays down really nice uh, white pencil. Well, there you go. I Karen, Karen sort of I'm sorry. I said, there you go. I sort of met your sister. Yeah, there we go. Somewhat. <laughs> nice to, you know, somewhat meet you. <laughs> All right. Uh, a little more. I'm just about ready to kind of move on here. How are you doing? Um, yeah, I'm kind of there. Okay. Um, just trying to avoid the pitfalls from the last stream, uh, from the last session, rather. Right. So I'm just trying to get some of the base base tone down. Derek Moore has a super chat for $10. Thank you so much, Derek. He says, hey -oh, any tips on how you learn to stylize design you, your shadow shapes? Uh, who do you look to develop stylized shadows and shapes? I, I Thank you again. Um, my shadow shapes really come from Simon Bisley. Actually, his, his uh, black and white work, I really like how, um, how jagged it is. It's something that he, he really... Uh, okay. I'm kind of running out of paper, so bear with me. This is a cover that didn't work out. So, you know, I'll just use this. Um, where's my, you know what, here. Okay. So, um, he uses like a jagged shape like this, and then he'll kind of connect in another shape. And he, it's all about his connection points and nice, hard kind of lines. And I just really, really like that. And I use that basically everywhere. And more of a, a jagged approach, like, like this, where I kind of do this kind of thing. Uh, I got from Mark Silvestri and from um, from uh, uh, um, Jay Lee. <clears throat> I go as fast as I can here. No worries. Kind of giving me a chance to like step back a little bit and go, hey, what's not working? You know what I mean? Right. Omnisera says, Eric is in a, actually in a great spot for painting over. David is going into detail. This is probably going to get lost real quick. And uh, yeah, that can happen. So we will see how that goes. But really, the thing that I like about this method so much is uh, you really don't lose your detail. Because the next stage after this is going to be very thin washes of color and no white. If you use white in a wash, it becomes um, uh, translucent or opaque, and you will lose what's underneath. 
81 Modus has a $2 super chat. Thank you so much. And he says, what happened to Silvestri? Nothing happened to him. He's still doing phenomenal work. I think the best work of his career, he's not doing as much as the, of it as I would like to see. You know, he's, um, I think he's, he's earned his vacation time and, you know, taking it easy. And when he does work, he, he really makes it special. And it is. <laughs> Acero MC says, David, say hi, please. Hi. <laughs> he says, let's go, Eric. <sighs> Fizan Hussein says, are you do guys doing anyone after cap? You know what? We will do this again. Certainly, we're not going to be doing another one tonight. Um, you know, <laughs> this is going to be uh, very time consuming as it is. This is really just stage one. So, um, And this is right here. This this is the reason why over the years I've never really done this stage to the extent that I could because it's a headache. I hate doing this. I just want to be painting, you know, like I'm ready to paint. Let's go. And uh, so. Yeah. The Joe man says, how are you going to keep those pencils from sponging when you paint? Now, um, I could use uh, and I, i've got it somewhere around here i could use a, a workable fixative reworkable fixative just spray it down it takes a, a second to dry and it would fuse it it would be easily worked over and i would have no trouble with it i don't do that i just go right over it and it does smudge a little bit but i don't mind because i don't want this to be super super clean that's not the look that i've ever wanted so you know and it depends on what you want if you want it to be very clean then then you could absolutely just put a little bit of reworkable fixative on it it's a spray yeah, and again, I mean, you can you can rework your pencils as you as you go along. Yeah, uh, Artsy says, can you scan this before you paint it? You know what? Um, what I will do. I have a phone around somewhere. Dang it, Eric, it's on you. I'm going to get Meredith's phone. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> Yeah, a fixative, if you breathe that in, it's not too good for your lungs. All right, who's spamming? <laughs> I'll, I'll do you now. <laughs> Yeah, Dan, you can, yeah, I mean, basically what matte medium is, is it's acrylic without the pigment. Um, what, what the medium does is it adds more binder, and that allows you to spread your pigment further. So putting pure matte over your picture is kind of like varnishing it. Um, so, yeah, that'll, that'll lock whatever's there in place. All right. There, I took a picture. I'm a little afraid with the live stream. Sorry, Eric. I'm no a little worries. afraid with the live stream. If I try and run the scanner, my computer will. Uh, the lights out. will blink and. Yeah, this whole thing will come crashing down. So. You'll, you'll drain all the power in your neighborhood. Yeah. Also, I got this crazy expensive scanner. It was expensive. It's huge. And uh, every time I scan something, I have to reset it and I have to adjust the levels because it blows things out or it goes too dark. So. We could be here all night doing that. You know, I'm tempted to uh, let's see. Tempted to just paint paint this in. Not add pencil, but I'll go quick. My paper's already buckling from sweat. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's looking great. Jonathan Lopez says, if your pencil is made out of wax, like good color pencils are, the pencil marks won't smudge uh, or they'll smudge very little. And it is true. They don't smudge much. I get a tiny little bit. So, yeah, it's it's not much at all. Spenny G says, hey, David, did you see Jason Fabok's addition to make a, he did an addition to a gem piece that was originally just a head that I did. 
I don't think so. No, I'll have to see if I can find it. Adi Granoff, Zayu says Adi Granoff uses a camera instead of a scanner. What's the trade off? Well, uh, the trade off is if you have a really good camera, you need a good camera to pull it off in good lighting. You, a scanner runs a light along the image and it picks up any ridges or anything that's, that are on the paper and it can make for a less uh, kind of attractive result, especially colors tend to come out richer and more um, more uniform. Like it, your, your whole picture has a more uniform look when you put a gloss medium on it. It's very, very pretty, but uh, it's an, a nightmare on a scanner because it reflects back into the scanner and it makes it really difficult to scan. So yeah, I would be photographing. I don't paint enough that I've ever really needed to do it. So my camera is just not, you know. Yeah, another problem when you use your phone, you get uh, parallax issues as well. And uh, things can look warped and out of, you know, out of perspective. And yeah. The scanner removes that. Yeah, I think I'm just noodling at this point. Okay, we're going to move on. Here we go. This is where the wheels come off, right? Yep. All right, let me grab some paper. Okay. So this next stage, uh, I'm going to take some bird sienna. I'm going to dab a little bit out. I don't need too much. Um, I've got one of Meredith's nice jars. She doesn't know I have it. <laughs> Uh, so there's my water. You must use that vase of yours, David. The infinity vase. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay, and so I'm going to use my largest brush. I need a bigger brush. This is way too small, but this is what I've got. And uh, I'm just going to uh, take a bunch of water. I'm going to dip it into the corner of my paint here. I don't want to pick up too much at once. A bunch more water. And what I want is something that is fairly thin because you can see what I have here is enough that it would really cover more of the picture than I really want to cover. And so I think that's pretty good for now. I'm going to go for it. Oh, and Eric, uh, you know what? I'm going for it. I What's forgot up? again. I forgot. You get a better result if you, uh, you know what? Wet the paper first. If you wet the paper first, you really do. But this is uh, my initial stage and what the heck? We're going for it. I did this last week too. I forget every time. And you can see how I'm a little streaky. This would not be as streaky if I uh, wet the paper. But again, it's all right. This new paintbrush is fighting me. All right, just want it relatively uniform. I'm not too worried about brush strokes. Um, and if you go pretty quickly, it all mesh meshes together pretty well. And the idea, again, is I just make sure that I know where I am on my other paper before I start painting. I don't just go on and go blonk and oh, it's too dark. So I wanna have a pretty good idea of, of where I am in terms of my uh, paint thickness, my amount of water. So that's it. I'm going to clean up my brush. And Eric, every single time, goes way too light with this. <laughs> and so he ends up doing three layers. You're going to at least do two. Yeah. Yeah, this is probably the second scariest step, step for me. Because, I mean, the base layer is really is important. Um, it does a few things for you. It, it kind of seals the paper, gets your surface ready for painting. Yep. But it also helps embellish your, your base tones. Uh, it, going back to what we were saying previously, tonality is so important that um, your wash helps push your base tones and get your, va get your values correct from, from the get-go. Yeah. David nails it every time. Ah, uh, well, thank you. But <laughs> you can see how... Um... That entire drawing is still there. And uh, I didn't lose any of my detail yet. <laughs> we'll see. You know, I don't want to speak too soon. But so far, 
uh, and all the all the paint layers, which we're going to do in just a minute, uh, should pretty much go the same way. And then once we have all these layers, and this is going to take a minute to dry, um, once we have all the our initial just flat layers down, that's when we just bring up the lights and we're done. You well add a add a mass wants to know if you can use barbecue sauce. Yeah, absolutely. Barbecue sauce. Give it a shot. Good luck. Yeah, let us know how it works. And then yeah. uh... <laughs> Strife says now nah, Worcestershire. <laughs> yeah, if you can't lick your layers, you're doing something wrong. So yeah. barbecue sauce will be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Rustic says, and there you have it, folks. They painted finally. <laughs> well, we're done. Thanks, everyone. El Padrino says, uh, does it have to be a brown color uh, as base or does any color work? Any color works. I like a brown color. Um, I'm familiar with it. I kind of know what I'm going to get from it. So I tend to use it. Any color will work. I, I do recommend that you don't go too um, saturated with a, a base layer because it's supposed to fall back into the background. And if you go very saturated with it, you're going to. Okay, look, I think you're going to fight with it. I've seen Simon Bisley use bright red and make it work. So what the heck? Yeah, um, Ariel Olivetti, uh, I saw him do a Superman where he had, he had, it looked like he had, he had laid all his base tones down. I wasn't sure, but he actually used a, a very stark red as a background. Yep. And what it did was was punch his shadows out as red, and it just looked amazing. Yeah. So yeah, you can use any you can use any 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 wash you want. Something else that a wash does for you is when you're painting color against a white background, it's very hard to really tell where you're at in terms of tonality and color. Yeah, um, and just painting against this just adds that contrast that your eye needs to pick out uh, values properly. Yeah. Tim Adams says, "Would this technique work with ink instead of pencil?" It absolutely would. You want to make sure you use a waterproof ink. The one thing that you wouldn't get is this kind of gradation, and that's actually what I really want from this. The idea for me is to be able to paint my my tones down, and then just bring, be able to bring up the lights, and my shadows just naturally fall into place. So that's why I like this more than ink, but ink would certainly work. And again, all of my favorite painters, Simon Bisley and all these guys, they've all done it beautifully. So there is something up with this brush. It's killing me. Well, good news is you won't have to use it too much. Yeah, it's uh, adding these horrible streaks and it's driving me nuts. Ads can add character to it. Uh, Omnicon says, if you water the ink down, it will produce values the same. Absolutely true. Yes. I'm not good with that. <laughs> so I don't do it. If you can do that, and there are artists, I mean, obviously they do that beautifully, then yeah, for sure. It would totally work. Here comes the buckle, favorite part. All right. Good? I think so. Okay. So I'm gonna dab this down just so it doesn't get in my way. And yeah, so this is where you pull out your matte medium. Right. And so I've got ultramarine blue. The heck. Hold on. I'll be right back. Got the wrong blue. So what you want to do in this stage is um, get your matte medium ready. Um, mix your acrylic paint with the matte medium. Uh, yeah. What will happen is it will naturally become very translucent, which is exactly what you want. You want your, you want your wash, you want your pencil to, uh, you want to see that through your, through your glaze. And you can do as many glazes as you want, um, but basically you want to translucent so that you can uh, um, I mean, you want to translucent so you can see, you know, see see where you're going, see where you've been. Just get that tonality down, and uh, yeah. Is yours a gel, Dave? The paint? 
No, you're medium. Um, it's no, it's just a fluid oh. medium. Now, my uh, thalo blue is actually a liquid paint. It's all I have in thalo blue. And again, I couldn't get paint. It does not matter because you ultimately are going to work out your consistency uh, consistency here anyway. So, whatever kind of paint it, it really doesn't actually matter that much. So, I'm going to take a little bit of blue. Ultra uh, thalo blue is very very strong, and I'm going to kill it down with with a <laughs> too much black. And this is where it's, I like to be able to, and actually that's kind of getting closer to where I want to be. I'm going to take my matte medium and it'll extend it out. And I want it to be really dark and muted. I don't want my blue to be very strong. A little bit more water. And I think I'm pretty good there. And so now, try and find room on my desk. I'm going to go ahead and just start throwing this in. Have a little more water. All right. And, and you do want your brush a little bit damp for this. You don't want to rely just on medium. That just helps load your brush better. Yeah, I use more water than medium easily, for sure. And be careful shaking your medium. You can add some bubbles in there. And I'm kind of losing my lines here and there. It's fine. I'm not really too worried about being really, really clean with this because uh, I can clean it all up later and just fix things that I don't like. And you can see how it's really bringing it together into a bit of a tonal painting already. And I mean, this calling this a painting is, you know, generous at best. I mean, this is just a couple of washes on top of a pencil. thick uh, a little too much paint on my brush do it i had a little too much paint on my brush it's going a little thick this brush though i got a little bit too big nice thing about the filbert and i don't even know if i'm pronouncing it right is uh you can just hold it to the side you get a nice thin line um yeah How's your paper holding up, David? That's fine. It's buckling so bad. Okay, yeah, so is mine. But you, know, <laughs> you always put it under a heavy book. Yeah. It feels like I'm painting over hills. So speed, what I'm doing right now, I'm having to uh, get my paint, my medium, and everything. Okay. I'm having to just mix up some more paint the exact same way I did a minute ago. Kind of running out. So I'm kind of doing what you shouldn't do. I'm sketching with a paintbrush, which is becoming a bit of a problem. But the uh, brush is a bit too big. Um, I'll, I'll be switching that out. And uh, as I go along, I kind of want this actually just a little bit darker. You have to be very careful about going uh, a second layer on top of a wash. It can really, really cause problems. Yeah, so um, yeah, it brings up a good point. Um, you want to be very careful in having your paint dry 100% before you start adding other layers. Uh, if, if the binder or the acrylic uh, medium hasn't dried properly, you can pull little pits out of your paint well, out of the glaze, and it gets very, very difficult to fill in later. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that you're dry. Yeah, I've never in my life done a painting where I haven't done that at least five times. Yeah, that happened to here. So <laughs> yeah, the last session that happened, it totally messed me up. Yeah, for the rest of the painting, I, I, I could not fix the problem. Yeah. 
which in some cases it can add character, but I mean, really it's not something you want to desire for. Yep. And so I'm a little bit blotchy when I look at this here. Um, but I'm not too worried about that because again, this is something that this is just my base layer. Uh, Daniel Caselli uh, has a $2 super chat. Thank you so much. And he says, why didn't you stretch the paper? Um, I should, I know that I should. And it really is kind of step one. You put it on tape. Uh, part of that is, um, I keep forgetting. <laughs> and part of it is I, I've, I've done this a bunch of times. I find I can just put it under a heavy book for, you know, overnight and it kind of flattens out anyway. So I don't worry about it too much. El Pedrino is a joker. Eric's painting really has that Olivetti flavor already. No, sir. Yeah, it really does. Look at that. It's looking great. All right. That's one thing about Olivetti is, I mean, the speed at which he does this is just inhuman. It's, uh, it's really something to see. Yeah, it really is. All right, I'm going to go with a, another layer on here just to kind of... And I'm yeah. going to switch brushes here. This is too big. You know what? No. I'm just going to go for it. I really should be moving on to another color. Before, you know what? This is such a mistake. I'm going to end up making a mess because I'm I'm wanting to darken down my blue and I didn't wait for it to dry really. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to give that a minute. I'm going to go on to my red. Another thing I don't want to do is shove my head under the camera. So I'm <laughs> painting at a weird angle over here. Sorry, James GSR says, uh, wet the back side of the paper and it will straighten out. Yeah, there's that too. All right, so this is my pyro red, which is just my makeshift red because I don't have cadmium. And um, so I'm going to do the same thing with it. I've got my red. I want this to be very muted and dark. And so I'm going to lay out a little bit here, lay out some black. That's already, look at how muted that gets already. That's very, very dark. That might be actually even a little bit too much. So I'm going to add just a little bit more red. And now I'm going to add some medium. There's actually a little bit of blue paint in my medium. I'm all right with that, though, because if it shifts towards blue, that cools it. And when it goes up toward more of a warm red, I don't think that'd be a bad thing at all. And that seems like a pretty good consistency. So I'm just going to go ahead and start to throw in my reds. Yeah, so that problem happened over here. So that's right the life of the paint painting. It's going to be a struggle there. <clears throat> Wouldn't hot pressed watercolor paper be better for this sort of thing instead? Probably. <laughs> no. No. No, because it's not as good to draw on. I don't think. I yeah, don't. I want some tooth, but I I want a Bristol surface. I I really don't want a um, uh, a heavily toothed watercolor surface. And you know, this just depends on what uh, what kind of final look you're you're looking for. And that's just not what I'm looking for. So, yeah, it it would certainly work. It's just not what not the look that I'm trying to get. So I will say that I've already, so I'm already at a spot where I could probably even add some more uh, black pencil because I'm kind of losing my values here. So, I mean, seriously, feel free to do that between, you know, how many layers you need. Uh, it really helps and it helps later on as well because uh, you don't want to lose your values at this stage and then try to get them back later, you know, when you're guessing where your line work used to be. Yeah, yeah. Reviewed uh has a uh, a super chat for five dollars thank you so much and he says david have you been or would you go on fat man on batman with kevin smith and mark i have actually been yes and they were great i mean they're they're excellent hosts they're hilarious basically uh you know they tee up every every joke you say two words and then they make it funny uh, i had a great time i would definitely do it again we actually did it live at a convention in front of an audience a lot of fun and i keep my brush handle is so much longer than a pencil i keep catching my microphone with it
All right, I think that's it for red, right? On uh, mine, there's no other red spots, is there? Um, his nose. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> what color is his belt? Brown. Yeah, okay. All right. So I already have a, a bit of a skin tone. Uh, and I'm going to darken that down in a second. But before I do that, I'm going to work on the white. And so for that, I'm just going to use black... Uh, I'm off the page anyway. And I need some more um, of my medium. And I'm going to go really thin with this. I just want to cool it. I might actually add a little bit of blue even. I think I will actually add just a touch of blue. Paintbrush is making that horrible noise again. So apologies to everyone. That's eh, fine. No worries. All right. So yeah, I've got a slightly bluish gray. And I went fairly light with this because uh it's white. I don't wanna I don't wanna get carried away and I can always darken it a little bit more if I want to. I feel like it'll work better. Getting a little bit too thin. Daniel Caselli is a four ninety nine five dollars super chat. Thank you so much, Daniel. Again, I really appreciate it. And he says, have you tried Strathmore heavyweight mixed media boards? They have a vellum finish and much thicker than Bristol. I haven't. And uh, I, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Strathmore. So I, I'm 100% sure that I would uh, really like them. I think I'm going to start adding red here just to let this dry a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to let mine dry for just a minute while you kind of catch up just a little bit there, Eric. That sure. blue looks really great, though. It's very, very dimensional. And you can see I actually used my hand because it was getting too thick. I blotted it out. So I've got a mess that I'm going to have to deal with. But I never worry about this too much because I can fix it. Al Pagino says, Dave, are you going to add the highlights later or uh, you're leaving certain parts unpainted to indicate the highlights? No, absolutely not. I'm going to add the highlights later. So where it's a real mess, and this is why, first of all, I'm, I'm a lazy artist, you know, but also um, I, I know that I'll be really finishing this out quite a bit from here. So I, I don't want to really drive myself completely out of my mind trying to make this perfect when... Uh, this is really just my base layer. And this is where um, I, I think that the more experience and better you are at painting, the better this layer would be. Like, Eric, you have this really down to, uh, it's very perfected. And you actually, when we painted last week, Eric finished quite a bit earlier than me, and that was why uh, I had to fight with my painting a lot more. And I just tend to, I'm so impatient. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the problem, yeah, I mean, going, going light as I'm going, it, I struggle later on. I think uh, I get to a point where I'm, I'm kind of locked out of the process. So that, that's maybe what happened last week is I just, you know, I'm just not going dark enough. It's just an ongoing problem. But uh, 
um, I think when you go that dark, it's just, you know, you just have so much more room, room to breathe. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that, you know, last session was just me kind of locking myself out and I was trapped, painted myself into a corner, so to speak. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I think every painting, every piece of work that you do is going to be that way to a certain extent, you know, like they never turn out perfectly. So, okay. So I just took my burnt sienna. I just did it kind of off camera here, but I took my burnt sienna. I mixed it with black. Uh, here it is. So burnt sienna, I put a little black in it. It was too black. I put a little more burnt sienna. I put in a little bit of medium and it's mostly water still. It's, I don't, I use a lot more water than medium and I'm just going to throw in his belt. So for those using cadmium, uh, cadmium red light, um, if you want to darken the color a bit, just add some alizarin crimson. It does a real good job as a glaze over what you have. Um, and that should darken your reds for you. You'll notice what I'm putting down looks kind of orange, but um, that'll get fixed later on. I definitely want to say thanks to David too, because I was um, a problem that I was having is I was color chasing. I was always trying to find that right color. You know, you go to the store, you realize you don't have a certain color. You purchase that one. It doesn't give you the results you need. And you keep color chasing, looking for that perfect color. Well, the colors that, that David recommended are really, it's all, it's really all you need. Um, you know, you'll get, you'll get better at mixing and, uh, and, and getting that tonality that you want just for the few little recipes. Yeah. So I, I wanted to mention that I'm going to do my base color for my skin tone. That's it right there. It's the same color that I just used here for the belt. And that's just um, burnt sienna with, a, with black, you know, uh, obviously tilting more toward burnt sienna than black. And so I took that same mixture and I just added red to it. It was a little too much. And I brought it out here and I got something that, is more red and that's just my, my red so uh and that's should give me something that will work well as a, a good nice warm but muted skin tone what I, I don't want is something that's too saturated i want it to be you know fairly dark well basically like this this is kind of what i'm looking for yeah i mean um the colors you get away, the skin sorry oh, go ahead go right over your eyes Yes. You know, much better painting if you paint over your eyes and then bring them out later because yes. eyes tend to be in paintings way too light. Yeah, you don't want white eyeballs. I mean, if you look, you can look at people around you, your eyeballs pick up ambient ambient light, ambient color, and they're never pure pure white. Yeah, and I'm too dark. There. It's like the easiest too dark solution of all time. It looks alright. <laughs> well, I just died hit my hand over it and picked it back up and there you go oh. <laughs> and it gives it i like it because it gives it actually some texture so i'm gonna pretend it wasn't just a total mistake so are you using the ultra matte medium right now yep okay um, i try to find some i couldn't find any um well you're using vellum paper right uh no i'm using i'm using smooth Oh really? Oh, yeah, man, we're both doing. So I'm, I'm really uh, uphill over here, but uh, I'm definitely going to try to find some of that. So now that I, I kind of have my my um, paint drying up a little bit, I'm just taking my brush and just bringing in a little bit more uh, shadow in here. Just kind of define it a little bit. I'm not too worried about too much because I'll be able to do quite a bit more again with pencil. And uh, I want this whole thing to be very dark and mellow and uh, unsaturated because I'm going to bring in all the color with my um, light. Yeah, and something else, um, when talking about colored pencils, you don't just have to use black. You can use whatever colors you want, you know, especially for highlights, um, you know. You're not just prohibited to using black. Yep. Yeah. 
rickview.com says at this stage they look like wood bur- uh, wood burning projects very warm tone so far yeah absolutely they really do and uh, i will say uh Ariel Olivetti's work at this stage already looks beautiful. Oh, yeah. It's masterful. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, I'd say for him at this point, it's just like breathing. It's just uh, it's just so natural to him. Yeah. I mean, uh, for those of you who uh, purchased his course... Um, You'll just notice how, you know, fluid everything is for him, uh, you know, mixing his paint and everything is just so second nature. And it's just, it's just putting those reps in, you know, yeah, doing as many paintings as, as you can. And failure is the, the best way to learn. So, uh, yeah. and unfortunately, like my whole painting process is just, it's like a brute force method where I don't know what I'm doing. I just keep going until I, I finally make it work or I just walk away in shame, you know? So. We'll see what happens tonight. Well, I think, I mean, the last piece you did was absolutely fantastic. So, I mean, you're definitely, uh, definitely working for you. <laughs> well, something's definitely working. Um, Might switch to blue again and come back. So yeah, I will say that red, uh, red probably gives me the most amount of trouble. There's just something about that color. Uh, hue shifting with red is really strange. Uh, adding white can make red pink, so you need to be very, very careful um, when hue shifting. Uh, the alizarin crimson um, is definitely a good a good way to knock it down. And what I might do here, Dave, is leave this orange and do sure. the, do the Elizabeth Crimson around it and just see what happens. But. Yeah. Jason Kimball says, who is the artist a reference for this method? Again, Olivetti, it's Ariel Olivetti. He is a longtime Marvel and DC uh, artist. Uh, he does a lot of digital painting and he's for years and years done a lot of traditional painting and he has a course on, I forget every time. Uh, Domestica. Domestica. It's all in Spanish, but it's yeah, got English subtitles. Let me see if I can paste that here. Oh, it's, yeah, it's still in my clipboard. So let me paste it here. Paste it in the chat. Hopefully that works. Wait, yeah. hold on. I might have missed that. El Padrino says, Ariel Olivetti, Argentinian artist. I did not know he was Argentinian. I've yep. met him, but quickly. Yeah. So is it? Okay, this is so going to reveal my like complete lack of understanding of the entire world, but is um, Argentina Spanish, or is it... I know Brazil is Portuguese. Yes. Argentina Spanish, yeah. Okay. The Art Jedi says, uh, did you know that Jazz used to be a painter before he got into comics? Super cool. I did not know that. I'm so not surprised, though. And uh, DJ May draws says Spanish. So, yes, thank you. And German. And El Padrino says, yes, Spanish, but they have kind of a weird accent. <laughs> so there you go. Uh-uh. So, like, they're, they're like English people. Yeah, a friend of mine, um, and she may be watching as well, she... Um, She's Spanish speaking. Uh, she's yeah. from Mexico, uh, or, or her family is at least. And um, she, ha- she actually helped me translate some of Ariel Ol- Olivetti's videos because I was so interested in learning his process. And uh, she mentioned that his uh, accent is, is, is very different. Interesting. Yeah. Well, it's like, it's like uh, an Irish accent, for instance. You know, it's right. difficult to understand. If you're not from there, it's all Greek to me. Yep. Um, and pro tip for those who want to get his course, those of those of you who are English speaking only, um, 
if you use Chrome, you can auto translate the pages so you can at least uh, navigate Domestica nicely. <laughs> the first time um, I tried that was an absolute failure. I, I managed to do it. I, I think I just lucked out because I couldn't read anything, but I, I hit the buttons that seemed most likely to be the right button and it, <laughs> it worked. So good. Uh, Ferris Jabbar says, Dave, any chance you could publish a painted comics work in hardcover in the European mode? One extensive. A uh, long comic project painted. Fingers crossed. Thanks. Incredible work and multi-talented. Thank you so much, Ferris. Um, I would love to. I would absolutely love to. It's it's really very much a matter of um I, I've I've got a project that I've been working on for quite a while right now. I, I've I've always got plans for things and um it, it's yeah, I, I would love to do it though. Pablo Romero Art says, what people think is the Argentinian accent is the Buenos Aires accent that has some Italian in it. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, hey, and El Petrino says, Dave, if you need help with the translations, just give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. This is why coming online is so great, you know? So I can see already, I went too dark on his stomach in the white part here, and that's going to present problems for me for sure. I'm going to have to actually go light over that. It's going to be too dark because it's white. I don't want it to. So, you know what? And this is where I, I think if I did 10 of these, that wouldn't happen. But as it is, One Mighty R uh, has a super sticker. Well, thank you so much, buddy. Appreciate it. Kelly Ja says, David is amazing. Man, whatever you do, I just love your work. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Our Jedi says, the fin Finch Flock is the most... Wholesome community around. Absolutely. You know, I, I think there's a place for, for all kinds of different discussion, but I just, I want this channel to be about art and I want it to be for everyone that, you know, and so that's, that's what it is. Dragon Horse says, Eric's looks like 26 year old captain. Dave's looks like 40 year old captain that's ready to pass on the shield. <laughs> I'm a big Finch fan. <laughs> and Ferris Javar says, Dave, how did you, how do you get the three dimensional look on the painted head last week? Well, we'll get there. This is, this is stage one. And from here, I've got my pencil ready to go. I'm waiting for Eric right now. He's waiting for me. <laughs> I'm trying, and uh, and actually, it's it's fine, Eric, because it really gives me a chance to read the chat. And you sure, know, I never get to do this. I'm always drawing, so I'm kind of enjoying. I do uh, just go over the orange one more, and hopefully, my uh, lizard and crimson will bail me out of here. Yep, Mix is nasty. <laughs> That's quite the name. <laughs> Says I just looked up some of Ariel's paintings. They really are amazing. They really, really are. He's and you know, I, I'd say, yeah, it, you know, any of you, if you're curious, just uh, do a Google search and look up some of his paintings because he is incredible. Uh, yeah, I've, 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 I've stared at his art just for so so long. Just yeah, you know, just wondering how how he you know managed to do that. I was so happy when he decided to release a course on it. You know, it's just so so excited to. See you know, kind of peer behind the veil a bit and see. Right. See and that's why both of us were so excited to do this. This is not any kind of a, you know, we're not advertising his course or, or anything like that. I have no connection whatsoever to it, but uh, I'm a huge fan of his work. And the yeah. fact that he put out an actual, I've been searching for, for this for years. And I know you have too, Eric. So yeah, uh, it was a big, big deal to have this. And so, yeah, I, we've been playing with it now. Um, I was excited to do this with you guys, but, and I, I know I've said this a few times since we started, but this really is a, a bit of an exploration. I, I would not be comfortable doing a tutorial, you know, like a tutorial video, like for, for my regular videos on the channel, just because I'm not an expert whatsoever at doing this. Now that I'm dry while I'm waiting, Eric, I'm going to see if I can, I dab my hand over it a couple places. And you can see how I really kind of paid for it there, right? Eh? Yeah, I um, for some reason it seems to be drying slower than it had before. Um, Yours is or mine? I thought, yeah, I thought I would safe on this glove the last pass, and I kind of lifted some acrylic off. So, uh, is, is it is that what you mean? What's what's going on with with you as well? 
Uh, no, I went too oh. thick with it. I went too heavy and. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm trying to fix it. And this is what happens. And this is what Ariel's talking about. As I go on here, I can darken this area. But if I go over my initial area, it just gets even worse. And I'm getting darker and darker. It, you cannot get it to match up. And there are people that do like beautiful wash paintings like this. The level of control you'd have to have. I'm not worried about this because that's not the kind of painting I want to do here. This is stage one. St well, whatever. Stage three. It's a stage. So it'll be okay. This is exactly what happened to me last week, Eric. You remember? And actually, even worse. So this is the painting from last week. Um, and uh, this whole area in here, this whole hand was so dark on the screen, you couldn't even see it. It was just gone. And, you know, I could just basically go in and, and pick things out. It's like a, an Elvis painting on velvet. <laughs> you know, it just worked pretty well. So uh, I know any place where I go really dark like that, it's easy enough for me to fix it. I'm sure I speak for everyone when I, that that piece is just absolutely amazing. Well, uh, pretty sure people would like to see a course on that. Uh, you know what? One of these days, if uh, I figure out what I'm doing just a little bit better, I would love to do it. Absolutely. It's just, uh, you know, I kind of want to be a little more qualified to, I feel qualified to do this for the channel only because I wanted to do this because it'd be fun. You know? This is not really a tutorial. I'm, I, I, we're explaining exactly what we're doing and how we're doing it. But yeah, it's an exploration. So so I haven't even started on his face. I should probably do that and let everything else dry. And then I'm going to darken with pencil and go over once more. And, yeah. Uh, Al Bondaga 78 says, Dave, if you're impatient with the drying time, use a hair dryer on it, bud. I think I it'll blow everyone's ears off here. <laughs> okay, there's that. But and I do have again in a box somewhere. Who knows? I've got one. Um, and if I would have, there are places on here where yeah, I probably would have benefited. But uh, you it'd know. be funny if I just pull it out and start using it and act like nothing's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone would be muting the stream. <laughs> All right. So Dave's secret recipe for the skin tone. RickViewed.com says, uh, sorry, I'm chewing a little bit of gum. Uh, I wonder how this method would work with ink tents because each layer can be made stable with a hairdryer. Um, you know, I don't know. So, David, you said for the base, it was burnt sienna, a little bit of black and white, right? And then a the yellow ochre for highlights, if I remember correctly. For for the face? Yeah. Yeah, it's burnt sienna, uh, red, but... Oh, red. <laughs> black. Yeah. Man, I almost did that. Yeah, because for the lighter skin tones, you want to use red with yellow ochre. So you use burnt sienna, red, and a little bit of black just to mute it. Okay. No white, right? Oh, yeah, no white. No white anywhere. It, that's, yeah, essential that you never use white on your initial wash layer. I am going to have to use white over this because I went too dark. But... Maybe I won't. You know, we'll see. I, I I don't really know exactly how this will go. I David, I'm gonna, um, yep. so, sorry, I'm going to ask you again. So did you? So you said burnt sienna, cad, and what was the third one? Burnt sienna, cad, and and black. Just a tiny little bit of okay. black. And sorry about that. You're only using the black just to mute it. Yeah. And then you know you, I went way too dark with mine. This is what my mixture looked like. And I thought it would, oh, I picked up some of my blue. I thought it was going to work really well. It, it went on too thick and it blew out the face. So, Al Pugino says, uh, do, you, any, do you, any of you guys use reference to get values with a pencil? Uh, I didn't for this one, but I certainly wouldn't be above it at all. Absolutely. Um, I didn't, but I did cheat before the stream because I was so nervous. I just uh, I practiced what shading I was going to employ <laughs> just so that uh, I had that in, in, in my head. I didn't want to be fumbling around. Um, uh, I mean, Dave's an absolute master at light and shadow. Uh, I think it's, 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 a, it's a language for David, and uh, um, I was a lot more nervous, so I cheated a little bit before the stream. Jeff Wheeler says I would use a 
white pencil toward the end should make it pop and it absolutely would you really if you were better than me at, at this stage for sure you could really just add detail like add a few things with white pencil and it would totally pop mine's a bit of a mess eric is actually much cleaner with his because he's more you're more patient than i am you really are so yeah brad scott art says these look great guys and uh you didn't go too dark and uh, actually just a minute ago um eric scott said uh or asked how long this was going to go i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it could go on for a long time <laughs> yeah i want to do this until we're done it will be up on the the channel it, this could be four hours you know and if it is then uh if if you decide at some point and i don't blame you at all this is way too much you can come in later on and just kind of skip through so but yeah this is you know this is kind of the process here so it's it's always a, a challenge, Eric. You know, I, I want it to be entertaining. Absolutely, uh, yeah. I can't be entertaining and and do something I have no idea how to do at the same time. Sheldon Martin says, all night long. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And see, I would say for me, that's too orange. Okay. But I don't think, it, like, when you're putting it on, I think it actually looks really good. And when you light it, like, yours is so much more, you have a much uh, kind of a fresher, more saturated palette, which I really like. I just tend to, like, kind of darker, grungier stuff, I guess. So I would have... Well, yeah, the nice thing about going very dark with the flesh is, is that that's going to be your, if if you're too dark, then use that as your shadows, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's a problem I've had before. Again, is just not just not going dark enough. Um, just being too scared. Yeah. Well, you're you're getting pretty far with yours here, so I'm going to go ahead and start to do my second layer of pencil. Yeah, I'm going to do that next. Uh, Notice yeah. how much I can make this pencil pop on top of my painting now. I say painting with air quotes. Inside the mouth, I want to be dark. And this really gives me a whole other layer of of shadow and depth. And this is a where Ariel is using um, using paint to do this, which I think, obviously, I mean, you know, who am I to say it's not working? Clearly, it's working. I mean, this stuff is beautiful. I feel more comfortable doing it this way. So this is, and it's working, right? And I, I think that's all that matters. In the end, this is working for me. You might try this and hate it. Uh, all of this you might try, or not just that, you might decide that all in all, this is just not the look you want. So Dave, something that almost happened to me is what happened last session Yeah, that we had was um, with the colored pencil. The reason why you want a lot of tooth uh, I kind of push too hard here and that can pick up some of your acrylic and it almost happened tonight. Um, if you have the tooth, you can just light, lightly go very lightly go over it and already, um, you know, you can notice a tone change, yeah. but uh, I almost made that mistake again. Yeah. I, I wanted to say too, another thing that Eric and I have been talking about and we're going to experiment with, um, and it just makes sense is, uh, using different colors than just black, we decided for the stream we're not gonna we're not gonna do that because I don't want to. Uh, I wanted to keep this. I know that Ariel Olivetti just used black to keep things simple, and I thought that was a good decision. And I thought it'd be more helpful for you guys, and more important than that, for both of us, there's less of a chance of us completely falling apart. So that's how we're doing it. Yeah, painting is all about these variables, and if you start introducing more, <laughs> it's, uh, yep. it, it can go pear-shaped pretty quick. Yeah, it really can. You know where that comes from, pear-shaped? I don't know. I'm Maybe very not. interested, though. I'm, I'm sure someone on the stream can help yeah, us. There's, there's got to be an origin for that. Uh, everybody watching is going, nobody cares. But... <laughs> We came here for the painting. <laughs> right. What time is it? It's 9.45. Not too bad, I guess. No, it's not bad at all. I guess what what we guessed about three hours, but I mean, that's just a 
that's just a guess. It's uh, anything can happen. We still have to. Uh... So I said my, my the scary. Well, the second scariest is the, is is the wash. The scariest for me is the the lighting. So that's when things can really change. So um, we said three hours, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. We'll see. Yep. Pear-shaped is from the RAF. Pilots would screw up their loops and they would go pear-shaped instead of round. Huh. Well, thank you very much, Gordon. Yeah, appreciate <laughs> it. I've wondered that for years. <laughs> That's on your grandkids now. Yep. Charles Petri says a three hour painting. Yeah, this is uh, the Gilligan's Island of painting. This is a good question. Uh, Dave, how much layering of paint and pencil can be applied before the paper becomes unstable? Uh, infinite. One thing I will say though is that. Um, if you have a very thick, like a, a full thick layer of paint, you can't use color pencil on it because it's like painting on plastic. So as long as all of your layers are individually pretty thin, you can just keep going. Uh, and if you really press down on color pencil, it's very difficult to get, um, more colored pencil to go on it. You can get paint to go on it, but you won't be able like for, I'm going really dark here. If I wanted to use white to bring that out, it would be very hard. But, yeah, it is. It is possible for acrylic to crack, but since we're glazing, I mean, you can you can glaze until the cows come home, really. Yes, and a little bit of matte medium. If you just glaze just with pure matte medium, uh, that will actually bring just a little bit of surface back, just a bit, and it's enough that you can. Now, I don't worry about that too much because if I can't get the color pencil to work, I just use paint. You know, but there's another there's another saying: when the cows come home. <sighs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do one more on the blue. I realized I didn't do the dark blue on the shield. Now it is it is possible to do this without medium. But uh, you really have to be careful if you water down your acrylic too much. Uh, basically, the binder will fail and your paint will crack and do all kinds of weird stuff. So it is possible to over dilute. Um, as a matter of fact, I actually think it's possible to over dilute with, with medium too. But um, I think you'd really have to do a bunch for that to become a problem. Yeah, never had that happen. I've yeah. definitely over diluted a lot with water. That certainly happened. I'm going to go lighter with this glaze because I think my values are about there. I just want to put a bit of color on the black. Well, hopefully everyone's following along and having fun at least. Yep. It definitely is fun. I mean, it's just so tactile. There's, uh, and there's so many parts to it. I mean, the drawing and the shading and the painting and it's uh, always a good time.
So Dave, do you feel like it's feeling a bit better than the last time you tried it? Um, a little bit. Like I, as much as I kind of got messy and really modeled, um, I didn't end up so dark that I'm, I, I can't even see what I had, you know? So yeah, it's a little better. I'm a little concerned about the face. So this is the first time I've tried to do more of a like warm skin tone and the black is not the choice I would make. Ideally, I would probably, I, I think what's going to end up happening is I'll end uh -huh. up putting another glaze over it just to soften that black a little bit. That's my biggest concern right now. And I might do that actually here too. It might not be a bad idea. But for now, I'm just getting in my, uh, just shoring up my my black shapes. It, this right here means that all I need to do is just put in highlights, and this will come together. Believe it or not. <laughs> well, <laughs> famous last words. I think it will. Yeah, I would say paintings have a tendency to uh, scare you at some at some point. You know. Yeah. Go through an ugly phase. Now they don't always. If you're Ariel Olivetti, for instance, <laughs> there's no ugly phase. Right. Uh, we are not Ariel Olivetti, unfortunately. Yeah, it would probably be about a forty-five minutes exercise for him. Oh yeah, for sure. You know what? He's he's done with it. He's bored with it been there he's done that yeah i've seen him at conventions just you know whip out pieces just like like yeah. super fast yeah so i feel like we if nothing else because like drawing i mean i can have drawings that don't work as well as others for sure but i've done it enough that some of that magic you don't feel quite as much so if nothing else this might drive you crazy but at least we get to have the fun of discovery right absolutely i feel like bob ross saying that <laughs> yeah Nightmare says, Dave, are you a character designer? No, I am not. I've done it. Uh, actually, uh, quite a bit. But I, no, I'm a comic book artist. Character design is a phenomenal job. It really is. I strongly dislike doing it. I enjoy doing it for myself. But doing it for an art director, uh, even the best of art directors, you do multiple iterations. I come up with a version that I like, but that's not what somebody else likes. And, you know... Uh, I, I like the control of, of doing comic art where I, I'm not really art directed. So Kenny asks actually a pretty good question here. Um, and this is something you really need to be careful with. Hey, Dave, for the white parts, do I just dilute white with medium and water? Uh, no. For a wash? No. It, any You can't use white because white paint is opaque and you'll end up just um, covering everything. So don't use white. Basically, what you want is white is always going to shift down to a gray or a. Um, uh, oh, your sister, <laughs> Lizelle, says, uh, just paying for my entertainment tonight. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> um, you, you want to um, bias it towards your shadow color. So if you have a warm shadow color, then your gray will... And this is actually going to be... It doesn't really look like it so much right now, but once I start adding in my more pure color, all of this is actually going to look much warmer. Right now it looks very, you know, kind of draw, uh, drawn out and, and dreary. But... Yeah, what I will say for, like, highlights and that, I've found that going opaque first will serve you better. Um you can start almost glazing white on top of what you've put down already, but it gets really difficult. Um, you know, mixing white with another, another color to hue shift or whatever, but, uh, lighting's tricky. <laughs> uh, yeah. My, my favorite method is I've got a lot of black mixed into everything here. Uh, and so I, I definitely prefer to, in my first color pass, I go just a little bit lighter. It still has a little bit of uh, uh, black in it. I don't really, like, I, I still want it to be muted. I don't want it to be a pure color. And then as I go up, I bring more and more uh, pure color into it. So it's more saturated. I really like my lights to be the most saturated. And it makes sense because um, when, when it's dark, you only really see in black and white, you know, 
color is a result of light. So I, I really like it to be more saturated into the light. It's for me, it's always a pet peeve when I work with a colorist and the shadows are really, really saturated. Paul Essenson, hey, Paul Essenson's here, says, could you do highlights at the end with white pastel pencils? Yeah, you absolutely could, for sure, definitely. Um, I'm a little afraid of pastels, but yeah, you certainly can. Yeah, whatever gets you to that end, that end result. Yep, and Charles Petri says, uh, I'd say don't worry about the ugly phase, just do it. Yeah, for sure. Now, bearing in mind, Charles, uh, Charles that we are, uh, you know, we're on a live stream. You guys are all watching, so, you know, everybody's a little self-conscious. Well, we are, anyway. Paradox G says, what's this technique called? Now, this is from Ariel Olivetti. We've been talking about that for, uh, you know, while we've been doing this. But what it is really is just acrylic with colored pencil. That's entirely everything that's being used. So it's a colored pencil layer to begin. Then uh, some washes of acrylic. I use a little more colored pencil on top uh, afterwards. And uh, then a, a final paint layer where I paint in my lights. And I do find using black everywhere on this layer, this is not my, would not be my first choice. Like I, I definitely want to uh, start using color because it just, it goes a little bit dead. And I think that would be why Ariel Olivetti doesn't do this. But um, I've got a whole range of colored pencils. So the next time we do this, and I'd like to do this again with all of you, well, we're going to do a little more practice behind the scenes here. And uh, yeah, the next time I, I kind of want to update the technique and you know keep doing some of these. Yeah. In, in part, I would say it's underpainting and glazing is what I've always heard. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah, we're definitely glazing. Um, yeah. I mean, for, um, you can glaze over any kind of tonal understructure. Uh, you know, some people use Copic markers. Some people use paint. Uh, So what I'm going to do right now is I'm grabbing a little bit of my burnt sienna, a little bit of my red. I'm making the same color mix that I made originally on that face. And I'm going to um, just give it another pass. Very, very thin. It doesn't need much. I might even actually put a little blue in it instead of black. I think that might give that a try and see what happens. Yeah, I might totally botch this step, but I think I'm going to just work on the face a bit more. Uh, okay, so I, oh, sorry, Eric. No, no, I was just going to get it a bit darker. Sorry, go ahead, David. Yeah, I'm finding putting a little bit of blue into my um, facial mix kind of desaturated in a bit of a... I, I think black probably would work just as well, but I've actually got a side light that's going to be here that I'm, I'm not even worrying about right now. So there's that too. It's all down the side here, but we'll get there. There. That's going to work a little bit better in the end. Yeah. I might lay some blue over my skin a bit. Yep. Mr. Wing says Eric is a winter soldier to Dave's Captain America. I'm not sure which, if I think those are both a compliment. What do you think, Eric? We're going to take it as a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Wing. Oh, hey, Gerald Lang's here. And I don't know if I mentioned Kenny Wang. Kenny Wang's been here the whole time, but I don't know if I mentioned Yeah, Kenny's him. actually been uh, practicing um, uh, before. I've been, mean, you know, since hearing about the stream, he's actually been very excited and, you know, experimenting and getting all the materials and everything. So, yeah, he's uh, fully invested. Yeah. Oh, Gerald Lang is a, a phenomenal watercolor painter. Uh, and among uh, many other things. And he just said that uh, blue is a compliment to flesh tone, which is totally true, which is why it works so well. It worked better than black. So, you know, this is where I, I think um, if I did this more, like Eric, if, if this was something that we were doing continually, you'd really get quite a bit better at this, you know? Yeah, for sure. It's uh, uh, You have to get past all the issues before you can start seeing results. And uh so all it is, I guess, is continued practice. Yep. 
Sorry, Dave. I'm going to do one pass over the skin before I. Adding a little bit more blue and darkening a little bit here. Eric, do you have a channel too? I do, but it's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know you had a channel. I do. I just, uh, I don't post any videos on there. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> that would be why I didn't know. So theoretically, yes, I have a channel, but. Finding my mixture, I went so light with it it's actually working kind of everywhere i'm just going to slap it on everything and i kind of like doing this because this is really biasing my red toward more of a blue it's making it for me it gives it a little more character and it can help bring my whole picture together just <coughs> excuse me just a little bit so so paul essenson makes a good point um Mix your color with gray for desaturation. That's what I did with an oil painting. Yeah, gray gray unites all colors. Um, yeah. Which is so why, yeah. actually, Eric, sorry, Payne's gray is a phenomenal color because it is a transparent gray. So you're not having to use black really, really thin. You can just throw Payne's gray on it. Uh, I wanted to keep the color palette pretty simple and really, you don't need it. But yeah, gray is really just really watered down black for a, a wash or Payne's gray. But you, if you try and use gray with black and white, you'll end up with something opaque. And Ferris Jabbar says, Dave, what are the best resources to read or review visually to implement the painted look of your work? Uh, FYI, both of you and Greg uh, Capullo have a Frazetta visceral look. Any uh, chance paintings go for sale? Uh, thank you so much. And, you know, thanks for the comparison to Greg Capullo, too, who I'm a massive fan of. He's a great guy. Um, well, for me, I, I would say just in terms of, of inspiration, Simon Bisley is my absolute favorite. Uh, more so than Frazetta. I, that's probably sacrilege. I, uh, sacrilege. I don't care. I love Simon Bisley stuff. It just had so much energy to it. It's incredible. Um, in terms of, of learning how to do this, I would say the technique that we're doing right now, you would be very, very well served to go to uh, Ariel Olivetti's course on Domestica. Um, he's, he's a pro. This is his technique. We are actually doing a bit of a different version of it. So you'd really be learning the exact technique that he's teaching. Uh, I think that'd be very valuable. You can, you know, pick and choose, which, it, which is what we did here. We kind of picked and, and chose a little bit the technique that we wanted to go with, but, uh, you know, we certainly can't match his level of quality. Atomic Guard is here. He said, looks so good. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we're in a bit of an ugly phase right now. Uh, me a little more than Eric, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm struggling with a face big right. time right now. You know what? Uh, I think you should follow Ger uh, Gerald Lang's advice. Mix up a um, black, yeah, yeah just uh, yes. and go really, really thin with it, and just give it a wash, and it'll it'll kill it back. Okay, but really thin, and make sure it's more black than blue. Like obviously, you know, right? Okay. Daryl Lang says, "Bisley is Frazetta on steroids in terms of figure in terms of figure dynamics." Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, it's it's like throwing out all of the rules of of <laughs> taste and everything, and uh, making his own rules that nobody else could follow. El Padrino says, Ariel Olivetti uses the same technique for his digital paintings. He did a tutorial on digital painting for the Wacom YouTube channel. That would be very interesting to see. Yeah. Um, I think that's a big reason why this resonated with me so much because 
for digital paintings, I like building that that grayscale um, structure first. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, once you have that, theoretically everything should be cake. You know, I mean, that's really the hard part is getting all the tonality down. And I mean, this is kind of you know digital process traditionally or a traditional process digitally. It's. Uh, but yeah, his. Um, He's, he's just as good digital than he is uh, traditional. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. AC Osorio says, uh, kudos both, having a blast watching the process. Dave, any chance to see Andromeda Weaver and Lucian Barnes on a YouTube session? Uh, yeah, you know, I actually did Lucian. Lucian is from my comic from 1997, a long time ago, called Ascension. And I did a picture of Lucian with Hellboy. So that one I've done. I've not done uh, Andromeda, and I haven't drawn Andromeda probably in 20 years, so I think it'd be a lot of fun. A comic artist Kyle Hotz is built like a busy, a busy figure. He pumps major iron, says Gerald Lang. He, Kyle Hotz, I, I, I mentioned this a few times, but he probably, uh, before I broke in, certainly was the most helpful artist for me in, uh, in helping me giving me a direction and encouragement. And uh, uh, I had no idea that he was, he was so big. So I'm glad I've said nice things about him now. <laughs> Mr. Wing says for comic book production, you going grayscale with color washes is most deadline friendly. In my opinion, a absolutely. I could not disagree with that for a second. So much faster than the way that we did this here. I did this because I, I can do it. Uh, if I had to do color wash with gray, uh, I'm I'm the worst at it. it. It's a real struggle for me. So, you know, I I'd like to think that I'm going to be painting. Uh, you know, I want to be doing this art thing. You <laughs> know, I've been doing it for 27, 26, whatever, a long time, years, and uh, want to be doing it for that long again. You know, until I fall over and can't do it anymore. So, um, you know, I'd I'd like to get better at, at being able to do color wash, um, but. Uh, Ultimately, as much as this is not as deadline friendly, I really, really do like the the textural look that I can get from pencil, especially with better paper than this. This paper, unfortunately, is smoother than I would like. But sorry, David, am I really hold, am I holding you up big time here? No, and it's looking better. Okay. Yeah, I definitely muted it right down. Once you add light to it, I think it'll really work. Tell my card says, sorry, Dave, haven't been here for a very long time. I'm going to support as much as I can. I really appreciate it. It's just good to have you here. You know, <laughs> really, uh, we all have lives. So it's good to see you here today. Yeah, I haven't seen him in a while. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see how much he's improved. He was doing a lot of um, studies, very good studies. Yeah. And I uh, hope, hope he's kept, kept that up. Dylan uh, Demarest says, your shield is a little small, Dave. Other than that, it looks really good. Thank you so much. It's a frisbee. Uh, yeah, thank you for your time. You know what? It is probably a little small. And there's actually a commission that I did 15 years ago now. It's a while ago. And I did the shield so small. It got posted online. Man, that I get roasted for that. And I don't see this stuff until it comes out. Like, you know, a lot of times I catch this stuff if I can, obviously. But sometimes you just miss it. I definitely miss that one. And it sounds like this time a little bit too. Gonna do some crimson now. Hoping it works. Il uh hukma shabia. I and I'm sorry. Hopefully I said that right. It took me a second, but it says uh hi, I love from Indonesia, Indonesia. Thank you so much for coming and watching. El Padrino says, Dave, you should come up with a hashtag that people can use when they post their paintings on social media. That's um, a good idea. Yeah. I, I don't know how any of that stuff works. Um, when you when you post this one, Dave, yeah, just just create a hashtag, create any hashtag, call it uh, you know, Defense Artist Painting Stream. And what Instagram does is it creates a petition for that hashtag. Okay. So that anyone else, if they post to it, it'll be visible under that hashtag. Yeah, I so. can do that. Oh, that yeah, that'll be great. Then we can see everyone's results. Yeah. Yeah, I really, we actually, Eric and I talked about 
um, opening it up so we could see some of the, the stuff that some of you guys are doing as you follow along. And I really would like to do that, but um, this is going to be such a long stream as it is. So we we decided against it just because there's just not going to be time. But uh, I'd love to see what you guys are, are doing with this. I think my red's a little. One thing that is nice, there are places where I, I went with black colored pencil on top of my my tonal painting and the black colored pencil kind of stands out badly. But then I can just put another layer of paint on it and it kind of meshes it back in with the painting. So. And your reds are so good. Well, thank you. I just added a lot of black and a little bit of blue. I'm going to have to do that on the next glaze because I have problems with crimson. I mean, it's, it's just... Uh... You, it looks almost like pure red. You realize we're going to be here for the rest of our lives while you slowly, slowly. Paint. I know. Huge shift, huge shift. You really need to, yeah, go. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to make um, some black in with it. This is exactly what happened last week too. So yeah. last week, because and this is what I mean. It's a journey, right? And yeah, last week. Uh, Eric, your blue last week actually took quite a while to build. This week, I think you've really got something beautiful right away. But definitely a red, you're still kind of inching up to a little bit. Right, right. And I'm look, this is me saying this. I mean, mine's kind of looking like a... Somebody said it looked like an old playing card. <laughs> so I'd say that's probably... <laughs> it's faded right? <laughs> over many years. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin Mandevil says, good thing none of us have anywhere to be, David Finch. <laughs> good thing. Opacino says, uh, don't worry, Dave, we can go all night. I'm glad. You know what? I'm having a great time. And uh, I mean, we've done this a couple of times. I'm I'm so afraid of doing a stream where we're just sitting here, you know, and just working through something like this because I, I don't want to drive you guys bonkers, but uh, I love doing it. So I'd love to do it more. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> El Padrino says, Finch Flock Fine Art sounds cool. You know what? I'm using it. I'm going to do it. Use for the hashtag, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to feel like a moron writing it. I don't care. <laughs> Eric Hoffman says, what black colored pencils do you use? I've used Prismacolor, but it's smudged a lot. That's interesting. Um, my other one, I think, is a Prismacolor, and I didn't have that problem. Um, I do get, I find my paint layer can pick it up a little bit. If you do feel like you're smudging, too much. I, first of all, I wouldn't worry about it because that black kind of smudging around actually, I think, adds a little bit of character. I, I like it. And when you put in the lights, you'll be surprised uh, how much you can pop it back out. But if you are concerned about that, you can always use um, um, reworkable fix. I'm, I'm forgetting my my language, Eric. You know what I'm talking about? The um, reworkable fixative. Is that right? Yeah. Here, but I don't know any better. I'd say that sounds right. Yeah, I don't know. I've never used that. This is it right here. Workable fixative. And uh, yeah, you put some of this on it and it will seal a layer. You could actually put this on watercolor. So if you wanted to do this and you're more comfortable with watercolor, you could do this with watercolor, seal it with this. It would work just like acrylic. Uh, okay. I think. <laughs> Maybe don't quote me on that. This is what I was saying about red, Dave. It's like the bane of every painting for me. Yeah. Well, you just yeah really, really need to mute it down with blue and black. Yeah.
Fair Shabar says, Dave, have you entertained touring an art gallery of all your painted comics, fantasy work? Viewing paintings are an entirely different experience in person. Uh, no. And, you know, thank you. But I, I don't really have that much. Also, generally speaking, I don't really hang on to my work. Like, it just, I just sell it for the most part. So I don't really have too many paintings. Finally. Perfect. Look at that. Cthulhu Hand Luke says, new to your channel. Love your art. Cheers. Thank you so much. Nailin Malin says, good day, ladies and gents. And Ferris Bar says, where can we buy painting? Um, uh, well, uh, I sell my art through... Um, uh, essential essential sequential dot com. Generally speaking, I'm I'm not the most up on um, a lot of. Usually, what happens is I I don't I never really put it up for sale. I just get requests for it, and if somebody asks for a particular thing, that's when I sell it. I I'm not the best about having that worked out. Gerald Lang says, fixative works uh, if using watercolor like acrylic with less water. Otherwise, it seals the paper and less water flow and spontaneous to the pigment. A spontaneousness to the pigment, which is, uh, that is actually a really good point. If you're mixing and doing something with watercolor, you will totally eliminate the the behavior of watercolor. That, that makes a lot of sense to me. So it's a very good point. I'm a little sad. I can see just how much work I've got ahead of me fixing that area right there eric it's way too dark oh yeah yeah well, how how you how do you think you're gonna go about doing it uh i'm just gonna have to cover it with the opaque paint yeah McChiz Nasty says which version of the iron man suit is in your avengers 80 poster david i i don't know avengers 80 is that before New Avengers? I before I did New Avengers, I did a, a, an Avengers cover. It was the first time I had drawn Avengers, and that one was just based on uh, reference that they sent me. So I don't actually know. And shortly after that is when um, they came up with the, the new, more modern design that was designed by. Uh, um, oh, help me out, Eric! Again. Um, very good guy, a good friend of let's mine. Let's repeat that again, David. He designed the Iron Man costume. A recent one? Yeah. Uh, and yet, yeah. He's a good friend, too. I don't know. Uh, Addy Grab. Yeah. Thank you, Atomic Bulldog Guard. And sorry, Addy, man. Is that the superior Iron Man suit, or...? Uh, it's when I was doing a, a new Avengers, when I was just about to start, he had designed it. And so that was uh, the oh, costume that we, we all switched to. So yeah, page one comics. It's Jimmy, Jimmy Reyes has Joe, Joe Q. Uh, no, not for that one. That was, that was Addy. Uh, Marshall Hinson says, Dave, have you ever done a concept out for, for a mainstream superhero? Yeah, I have. Now I've, I've done designs for a bunch of, superheroes that have been published um i wish i could say like I, I designed batman's costume that was his costume for about a year uh through all the books um so yeah i've done different ones and i've but um i i think i can't say as i've designed a costume that has ever been anywhere near as iconic as hattie's Hi, David. Love from UK. Can I please be unbanned from the Discord server, says Kasim Latif. Now, um, I am not in charge of the Discord server, so I, I don't have control over that. Uh, so you'll have to uh, take that up with the, the server. Apologies.
Herman Billingsley says, do you have a favorite comic character that you uh, like to draw often? Um, yeah, Batman, for sure. Uh, Moon Knight. Um, Wolverine. I'd say those are my top three for male characters. For female characters, I would say it would be uh, Wonder Woman, Rogue, um, Black Cat, um, Catwoman. Uh, Ferris Jabbar says, Dave, do you do commission paintings? No, I don't. Sorry, no. Uh, Ozzy Press says, how was the process like for you on Moon Knight? Uh, Ozzy, it, um, I I got the first, uh, I was coming off of Avengers and I was looking for what I was going to do next. And we were talking about a couple of different projects. So I read the first two scripts for Avengers. They were just in uh, and they were incredible. Um, it, it was written by uh, Charlie Houston and he's a novelist, an incredible novelist. And uh, so, yeah, I was in when I saw the scripts. It was very action packed, very dark. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. And uh, we fought like crazy on that book, actually. Uh, Charlie Houston and I, probably more than I've ever fought with a writer, but he really knew what he wanted. He's he's very, very good. So I feel like, you know, we've got a result that I'm pretty happy with from it. But that's that's how it goes sometimes. You know, when people are passionate about a character, uh, I think you sometimes get your best work out of that. Dave, I'm gonna do one more layer, and I'm calling it on the red. <laughs> okay, Richard. I'll play something over later. Richard M eight four two two says, "Have you ever drawn Adam West Batman, or more importantly, his Batmobile?" No, I have not. Uh, yeah, no, I have never drawn either. That actually would be a lot of fun. I, I'm not sure how that would come out. It's it's so different than my natural aesthetic. Lithia Dozier says, Dave, have you ever done Power Rangers? Yes, I did a Power Rangers cover four years ago, something like that. Um, that was with Jimmy, right? Yeah, yeah, Jimmy Reyes, who's here with us in the chat tonight, actually inked that one. Uh, he's page one comics, for those of you guys that don't know. I'm sure most of you guys know Jimmy. By the way, Jimmy has uh, Dragon Rage, his creator-owned comic up on Indiegogo. Uh, it's doing incredibly well. This is a second chance campaign. He was able to fund the first time and they've got a bunch of extra stuff coming up for it. I've done two covers now, beautifully inked by Jimmy and colored by uh, Andrew Dollhouse. And oh, the colors are fantastic. Yeah, he did such a great job. Uh, Jazz Singh uh, is an artist on the book who is absolutely incredible. I think he's a rising star in the business. So uh, definitely, you know, check it out. I want to say the links in the description. I was in such a hurry to do this one. There's no link in the description for this, but it is in a lot of my recent videos. I think it, it it's in the um, description of my last live stream. And um, you can find it just by looking for Dragon Rage at India. Just type in Dragon Rage Indiegogo. I think that'll, that'll do it. Gerald Lang says, both pieces will sing and bind together once you guys do the lighting source. Well, I certainly hope so, Gerald, and I appreciate the vote of confidence. <laughs> In theory, it should uh, go well. Al Padrino says, jazz is already a star, Dave. Absolutely. All right, Dave, I'm going to do a final pencil, and then we're, we're good. And, oh, All Gerald right. says, uh, David, I sent Meredith a pic of your Dragon Rage cover I backed. Thank you so much. So you finished? You ready? I'm just going to touch up with pencil and I'm good. Okay. You know you know what? I may have to, uh, on the white parts, I may have to do add some blue glaze or something. Yeah. I don't have a problem lighting that up. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It's already lit, really, mostly. So what I'll do is, um, I would say go for it, Dave, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll play catch up. It's fine. I don't want to keep you waiting anymore. <laughs> Lego Batman guy, and I saw a question just a minute ago about, he asks, uh, if uh, we watch the um, Zack Snyder Justice League, and I have not actually yet, which I just watched one of the greatest movies of all time last night while I was working, Alita, Battle Angel Alita. Unbelievable. Oh, you watched it? Uh, I love that movie. So good. Yeah, it's a great movie. Yep. Okay. So here we go. I'm about to start painting with light. This is where 
This is where the wheels really do start coming off potentially. Yeah, it's a scary time. It really is. Okay, so I'm going to take, you know what? Show you guys what I'm dealing with in my palette here. It's a real mess, but I'm just going to dip out a little more blue at this point now. Um, and that blue is so strong. Thalo blue is very, very strong, so you don't need much. So I've got my white, and all this is below is dry, so I can just put it right on top of there. And uh, my black is still a little bit... It's good, so if I want to keep it a little muted, I should be fine. And I'm going to start with his the blue of his outfit. And so what I'm going to do... Actually, I'll, let me do this here, too. I'm going to take some blue. I'll just put it here. Take some black. Way too much black, again, every single time. I'm so afraid of the blue. Now I'm going to take some white, and this will make it opaque. And you can see right away it becomes very opaque the minute you add white. I'm going to add some uh, medium. And you can see on top of some of what I was mixing earlier, I think it might be good. Um, try and make some room here. You know what? I don't like this brush as much as the one I was using last week. I thought it might work a little better. Not liking it. So I'm going to use this one. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. I, I could have made it work with that. I just felt a little bit more comfortable with this. So. I just feel like I have a little more control with this. And what I want to avoid is using a really, really thin, tiny little brush. This will be here uh, until we all grow old and die. I'm guessing uh, blue and burnt sienna? For what? For the, for the white? Uh, blue and black. Okay. Because you already have so much burnt sienna in there. Oh, it's already... my, belt. my belt too, no. I'll go fast on the belt. That's yeah, all you need again, blue and black for that. Or no, um burnt sienna and black for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'll be a good idea. That is not doing what I wanted. No. We're going quiet. That's <laughs> what happens when I start painting. No, I can't. I know I'll be able to talk again in a minute, but right now I'm like, oh no, it's all going to fall apart. That's me. I'm stuff started sweating again. <laughs> uh, trying to knock this white down. I feel like this, this is what uh, I know everybody goes through when you're, when you're drawing and you don't do it as much. And I've been doing it for so long. I've kind of forgotten that feeling and you take for, yeah, it's easy. You know, it is not so easy when you don't do it much it is everything it is easy and this is easy but there are just so many pitfalls that you have to learn to avoid and so this is my first layer of light uh, i'm just a little bit lighter than my background but not too much and i can uh bring it up from here
And I also can glaze over this if I need to. So, and that might happen. Jen, Dan, Genovese says, I see what you mean when you said uh, how going to light in the beginning can make it more challenging when adding highlights. Uh, going too light, yeah, it, it certainly can. You just have nowhere yeah, to go. That's what I'm facing now. Uphill battle. I think it's probably the worst thing that can happen. Yeah, it's all recoverable, but if you are not really prepared for it and aware of how to fix it, yeah, it's, but you know, this is where you, I think you have to do, I don't know how many paintings, whatever to, you know, a, a thing that's interesting about acrylics too, and you have to kind of be aware of is um, I'm getting a little bit, and this is all my paint is just, uh, soaking into the paper, so I need to mix a little more actually. A little bit of blue, try and get a little bit of black. I went too black last time, and that's not my white, that's my white. My medium, I don't want it to be so thick, so I'm still gonna add a little bit of water and. That's about where I was before. I feel like I'm actually, I'm pretty close. That's such a difficult thing for me to do is uh, get the same tone after I remix more paint. But I guess the benefit of that is you get more variation to your picture, you know. And something to really be aware of. I don't know if you noticed this, but this all was much lighter when I first put it on. And you can see it's lighter here where I'm painting right now. Uh, acrylic paint darkens when it dries. So it can kind of throw you a little bit. And this is why I really wasn't too worried about my my stuff being too muddled underneath here because I knew I was going to be covering a lot of this. Ferris Shabar says, uh, asks how much color theory I feel like applies to my work and how much of it's by feel. Uh, you know what? Uh, there's a, uh, certainly color theory. I would say th my biggest understanding of color theory, look at how much <laughs> my sizing is so bad. Eh, you know what? Um. My biggest understanding of color theory is I really like things to be more saturated toward the light. Uh, and I find that black is a very effective way to kill colors. So I use it all over the place. That said, I got a better result with blue over the face. So I, I need to learn more. And this is where, you know, somebody like Gerald, uh, Gerald Lang, who's in the chat here, uh, really knows what he's doing with color, certainly far more than I do. And that's where you're going to get a better result because for Gerald, if he's painting and he uh, wants to get a particular effect, he's got that in his toolbox. And I just don't to that extent. So 
Yeah, and, you, can, uh, you can drive yourself crazy with color theory. You can. And Eric, you're much newer to painting than I am. So like using the, the like darkening your red was a real challenge. And once you got it, it looked great. Like it just worked. Yeah. But you yeah, definitely struggled with that. And I don't think you ever will again. And that's how it goes, you know? Right. And if you uh, feel like your your color's a little bit too intense, you can always just dab it with your finger and it kind of kills it back. Oh no, my chair started squeaking. <laughs> it's all over. And this is a place for me right now. I'm kind of looking back and there are places where my, I feel like my black is too heavy uh, and it's kind of standing out a little bit. So I'm just kind of covering it with my paint. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Totally missed the A. Dan Genovese said, I use my finger and it worked. Yeah, it totally does. It's like magic. Oh, to add the, add the fade? Yeah, just to like dab it back yeah. or feed it. Yeah, you have to be quick about it, but yeah, it really works. And this is going to be the hardest part this first layer because the second I, I won't have to cover as much ground because i'm gonna build to a, a more of a highlight
So I'm getting a, a, the kind of right amount of dryness to my brush and it's kind of allowing me to start to fade into my darks just a little bit more effectively. So I'm doing that right now. I'm going to want to angle the, this side here is going to be lighter. I want it to be a bit of a different color, but for right now, I'm just going to put in my local color because I don't know what I'm going to do with it. So work that out later. I've hit the ugly phase. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hey, Eric, is it intimidating drawing next to David Finch? I'll have you answer that one. I think you know the answer. <laughs> you have me answer that? Huh? No, no, no. I'll, say I'll have uh, Draw Ninja KC answer. I, th I think he knows the answer to that question. Oh. It's very intimidating, but it is heaps of fun. It is um, a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, it's always a blast. Yeah, always for sure. thoroughly enjoy myself. So what I'm doing right now, I've got a much more saturated blue. I'm going to add a little more white to it and keep going up. I don't really want any black in there to kill it back now. I want more color. And this is the color I had here, and that's too light. So now I'm going to take it and just mix it back with some of the color I had originally. And we'll see. I think that should do it. I was off the thing the whole time I did that. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Here we go. Gerald Lang, using blue in the face with shadows is perfect, Dave. It shows the transpar transparency of the pigment and our natural skin color. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is so effective. This is what you really, you can't replace um, somebody that really knows what they're doing, watching you and suggesting things as you go along. You know, there's no replacement for them. Yeah, so uh, going back to the um, going back to what he was saying, is it intimidating? Uh, I mean, yeah, David's helped me so much, just improve uh, very, very quickly. And yeah, I mean, having someone point out as you're, you know, as you're drawing or as you're painting is incredibly helpful. Uh, I mean, Dave, even your tip for me for you know throwing more confident lines, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't really have known that unless David pointed it out, because I don't generally draw in front of everyone. But uh, um, you know, David saw that and helped me fix that right away. Yeah, it really made a difference right away. It really did. I'll tell you what, having the, the benefit of the uh, the video next to me here, I can. Uh, it's a nice way to zoom out and click the values of your of the work. Yeah, it it is actually. I just did that a second ago. I'm kind of looking at where I am. Where am I with this? You know, is it kind of holding together? And yeah, it actually is pretty helpful. Henry Jeremick says the tone really changes as it dries as well. It really, really does. Yeah. Something that can be a little uh, difficult to get used to. Also, when you, uh, when you varnish the painting at the end, um, that actually makes it more vibrant again. Yeah. So it can, uh, it adds another dimension as well.
Guys, when you draw it, you always check both sides for correctness. So that is also correct in the mirrored form because it's not always possible to do. Um, I try to. Um, I don't know what you mean by it's not always possible. Um, if you mean not having a mirror, you can always hold the uh, you can always hold your work up to the you know to the light, or you can put on a window, you know, have have the light shine through. You can turn the paper upside down, which is another way. Uh, so you don't always need a mirror. So you can definitely, uh, as long as you just change the orientation from what you normally look at it, then that'll that'll achieve the same effect than using a mirror. Yeah. I never do it when I'm doing this, unfortunately, just because I, I can't. But when I'm doing my actual work, I do all the time. Yeah, there was a video with Jim Lee. I think he was doing an interview maybe with uh, um, some journalist. I don't know. But uh, he actually did that like right in, right in front of them. He, I can't remember if he wasn't too happy with it or, or, or what his motivation at the time was. But uh, he, um, he turned his paper upside down and fixed something and carried on. Yep. Yeah, there, a lot of times what I'll do too is I'll just cover a little bit of it and, it, you know, kind of isolates a section and I see if that little section, like if I, if I think, you know, maybe this is working and that's not, I can cover it. It, it can help too. There are a lot of different. Used to go. All right, Dave, I'm just going to go in with this pencil and I'm going to start highlighting. Okay. Fell behind, but I was fighting with that red for way too long. Well, these scales are taking me so long. You got time. I'm going to be doing <laughs> these for the rest of my life. Oh, yeah, this will be easy. Oh, no problem. Wrong. Uh -oh. oh, we got Simon Kucher here. Hey Dave, great stream. How do you decide what areas to highlight? I know the basics of it, but it somehow doesn't feel right in practice. Thank you so much. Uh, well, I've got my light, my main light coming from uh, toward him and from the left, which is a pretty standard light source for me. And to be totally honest, I am a little reluctant to play with my lighting too much uh, for a painting that I'm doing in front of people. I, this is not something I've done before, so I'm kind of keeping it a little simple that way. Um, and, and that really does take practice and some study to uh, get to the point where you're, you're comfortable lighting. Uh, I would say the best way to go about it is to um, work with a single light source. And uh, you, everything is volumetric. It has form. And where it turns toward light, it's going to be lighter. And where it turns away, it's going to be darker. And... Uh, life drawing and you know drawing from other comic artists that kind of whatever the style it is you want you really need to take in influences to to really get better at it it's not something you can do in a vacuum yeah definitely don't be afraid to use reference it's that's something that uh, david helped me realize was um you know don't be afraid to use reference I mean, there's all, we have all this stuff around us, you know? Yeah. Uh, and use it. <laughs> the cap is so loud.
Ice Man says, those scales are looking very nice. Thank you. Though I must ask, why does Captain America have scales in the first place? Because he is a fish. I have no idea. It's a cool texture. I, and he's had scales for a long time. Long before my time. So I, I, I don't know what to tell you on that one. Because the original artist decided that none of us other artists had anything better to do than spend our lives drawing scales. <sighs> this is by far the scariest part. Kevin McGuire is the one to blame for drawing every scale. Who is? Kevin McGuire. Oh, yeah. Oh, there yeah. you go. Well, next time I see him, I'll yell at him. Why? Why? He lives in Portland. Last time I was there, we. We had dinner, uh, him and Meredith and I. It was great. Oh, great. Yeah, it's... We need the world back to normal again. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Let me go to my next kind of level of lightness here. Again, I want it saturated. So, dry brush is really blessing me right now. Oh, yeah, that's looking great. Brad Scott Art says, guys, these paintings are both incredible. Thank you so much, Brad. They're coming along. I'm feeling... <laughs> Charles Petri says, five hours is a good start. Maybe uh, if you have the time regularly. So like, I, I missed what that was about. But, yeah.
How, what are we, 1059? We're, this is three hours in already, isn't it? That was our original estimate, yeah. But, well, so much for that. If we knew what we were doing. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. But uh, I will say, uh, to, um, from the last session we had, I, I definitely, uh, there's areas that have gotten easier, but um, there's definitely still some that I'm going to have to work on. Uh, just some of the color mixing is just so off. looking amazing dude thank you eric wow dave have you ever tried swamp thing uh well i've drawn them in a comic uh i i just did a swamp thing cover not that long ago actually but i've never painted them I would imagine that would be a pretty nightmarish to paint um, all those details. And... I think that's where you get out the uh, uh, paper towel and yeah, work pretty well. Yeah, this is definitely the step that requires the most patience, for sure. Well, this is this is where I actually started enjoying myself. Yeah. The rest of it all, it really feels like a chore to me. This I enjoy. Thank you both so much. I still have a long way to go, but I feel like I've leveled up because of the stream. I'm good. That's what it's all about. Yeah, for sure. That's great. We all do. Dave, look at this brush. <laughs> I, I don't want to. I don't want to touch it because I'm getting this perfect dry brush effect, but it's it's crying like a, for help. Yeah. Way too heavy with my. What happened? I uh, nothing good. I don't know.
I might need to take a bio break here in a bit. Did you say a bio break? Yeah. Yeah. Bio. I have to go right now. <laughs> yeah. And not Smuzzy says, Dave, can you guys paint the Scarlet Witch on the next stream? That would be a lot of fun, actually. It would be. All right. I'm going to go into the white. Now I'll do the red. Okay. I'm doing the red. Uh, not having a moderator it means every once in a while you look up and there's somebody going oh, oh, oh you know <laughs> i'm having to like just go in and oh was there another one yeah Are you guys light to dark or dark to light kind of painters? I kind of do both depending on confidence. I feel Dave Mack is the same way. I am a uh, dark to light. I, I not comfortable the other way. Yeah, the same. It's a brain teaser going the other way for me. This is going to take a few layers here. It's looking great. Eh. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate it, really. I'm very supportive. <laughs> this is exactly how I felt last week. I'm like, oh, man, it's all falling apart. It's all over. Dave, why don't you paint more? This is why. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to end up having to do some glazing over this, I think. Just over some, like my, yeah, it's going to need some work. I'm going to do that right now. Well, you know what? Let me finish it. I might as well make it consistent, and then I'll glaze over it. Gerald says, Dave, I like the top of the rib cavity shadow you started. Finish it across the top to bring it forward. All right. I'm going to take a break from blue for a bit.
ultimately I needed a lot less contrast in this whole area. So I think uh, I can take this and then knock the whole thing back and then give it another shot. I think it should work a little better. One mighty R is going. Gotta go, fellas. I wish I could stay longer. You guys are the best chill chat ever. <laughs> We're barely talking. I'm sorry, mighty. Uh, see you, Dave and Eric and Flock. Yeah, well, good night. See night you there. Erica Scott says, hey, Eric, uh, maybe it's just me, but the star doesn't seem perfectly in line with the rest of his chest. No, I, I think it looks in line to me. Well, <laughs> way beyond the point of return on that one. <laughs> yeah, and so. there is that is absolutely definitely a a thing. It's, uh, you know, once you get to this point in the painting, if the drawing's not working, it's all over, man. It's game over. Well, I learned my lesson. If I'm painting somebody that's something that's white, it's so light. Man, I'm. I'm what's this that? Is a, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, like his star actually worked out okay because I didn't really put anything underneath it. I really had some problems down here, so won't be doing that again. Hopefully. Wowzers, I'm going to have a problem with this. Oh, dear. <laughs> this, is, this is what I was worried about. What's this, the matter? Um, the base tone of the white is off, and I can't lighten it properly. We're both running the same. See, maybe we, we should have done Captain America. I've been painting this other guy this whole time. I never tried Captain America. <sighs> George Pratt says, sometimes you can't polish a turd in art. Gerald Lang says, yeah, you know, wise words. We're going to keep polishing, though. Uh, you want a bed? We can polish one. And then right <laughs> We're going to keep polishing. And ultimately, if there's one thing I've learned with this whole process... I never have paintings that just work. It's always a, I always go through this where, you know, it just, things fall apart and then it's how you try and bring it back together. I was genuinely hoping that it would all just work for the live stream though. All right. I'm having to dab like crazy because it's just not working. Just gotta keep tracking. Yeah. John Ninja Casey says, okay, so I know you probably answered this question like 10 times tonight, but I'm a little late. So where's Meredith? No, actually we haven't. Meredith, uh, yeah. Getting her to do a, a two hour live stream once a week. Uh, that can be a challenge. So, you know, getting Meredith to do, a, how many is this going to end up being? Four hours, who knows? Yeah, there's no way.
and Genovese, he says, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's, what's that, Dory, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know that one. I've got kids. <laughs> and mine are a little older. No sighing. Yeah, this one is uh, interesting. I'm just going to have to noodle on this one for a while. If that's the term, I don't know. Yep. I guess. Why not? <laughs> it is now. <laughs> no. Who is the thumbnail for the stream? It's my own character named Blight with a Y, <laughs> which is how you know he's awesome. He's got the Y. Actually, he's Blight with a Y because Blight was already taken. <laughs> so, and I like the name. So, there you go. He's really a character I just came up with to paint. How do you prevent line work from getting too murky? If you're talking about the painting here, just keep going over it with your uh, black pencil. Yeah. Yeah, I always have the option of going back in and adding that detail back or playing with it.
Yeah, Gerald Lang. Push and pull the lights and dark values. Dark means back, light brings forward. Yep. That's a constant pushing and pulling. Hi, James. Thanks for coming. <clears throat> Oscar Ramirez. Herrera says, wow, two video drawing. That's right. Yeah. We're all about the added value here. Incredible, David. It's 3D. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, really. It's, uh, yeah. I would not say that. What I would say right now is I'm not feeling like it's a loss yet. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm not happy with the white. I'm struggling with it, but I, I'm feeling like, okay, I can, I can still kind of see where I want to go and I can keep messing with it. I think I can get there. Yeah, it's looking really good. And this is where I'm really just having to fully paint. Like I'm painting in shadows. I'm, you know, I'm getting mm -hmm. because I, I botched my underdrawing for this. And I had no way of really knowing that until I did it. I've just never tried it for this kind of a character. Mm -hmm. That's the excuse I'm using. Yeah, I had to do that earlier too. I uh, was in a bit of a corner. But you wouldn't say you're struggling though. It's looking really good. I'm feeling the struggle, let me tell you. George Onro says, Jesus, look fantastic. Uh, great work to you both. It was just checking in back before, uh, checking back in before bed. Good night, everybody. Good night, Ger uh, G George Arnold. Did, is that what I said? Man, George, getting a little tired here. All right.
Jordan Seward is here. He said, almost forgot about the stream I've been waiting so long for. Well, you made it. You are three and a half hours late, but it's all right. Uh, Carl uh, Kligerman says, okay, guys, I'm out. I'll catch up uh, on the rest later. Thanks to all. Really love the stream. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming and watching. Hopefully you can catch us later. Yeah, you know, running long. Can't deny it. Definitely running long. I think I'm actually going to finish out some of this with colored pencil rather than killing myself. Yeah. With it. I'm going to do his face and then glaze over the glove again and hopefully that'll look, look better. I'm having a real struggle here on the struggle bus. <laughs> yeah, my shield is, you know what? I'm going to finish out the shield. Yeah, dang it. You can't just leave it. I need a little more white here. So it was yellow ochre and white, correct? I believe that what it, that's what it was. For, the uh, for what? For the face. Yellow ochre, red, and white. Yeah. Okay. Mostly yellow. Yeah. It, Uh, thank you so much. The tomato, tomato freckening. <laughs> <laughs> the shield is out of frame. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's almost kind of on purpose because, you know, it was well, not on purpose, but it really should be. All right. I'm going to go in with a red. I am getting to a point where uh, I need to start bringing it in just to start making this picture make a little bit more sense.
All right. And this is where I'm, I'm kind of going to end up paying for I just don't have high quality red. So I won't be able to get the kind of intense colors that I would be able to with a better quality paint. Need a little more Matt just so Jordan Seward says it's looking great on stream. The red is red is quite nice. Thank you so much. Some colors like red really don't show up very strongly on on darker colors too. Like this would be a much stronger red if it were um, white behind it, but I don't really want something completely blown out anyway. So kind right. of thinking more what I'm going for, you know? Yeah, it's looking amazing. Oh, thank you, Eric. Saman Kutcher says, Eric, did you use the same colors as Dave, or is it the amount of color being used, the reason uh, behind the difference between the feel of both of them? It it really is. It's the same paint, except for you have a better red than I do, so I can't reach that level of lightness. And so I'm, I'm going to be a little bit, unfortunately, limited. Um, so I'm going to have to kind of leave it fairly dark. I'm going to lighten it here, and it's okay if it goes pink because it's more reflective. The blue is the same, and it really is. It's... Uh, uh, it, and you can actually see the blue is really the same tone. I have more, more dark just because I've got the scales. So that definitely makes a difference. All right. I'm going to get some yellow ochre and, uh, you know what, actually, before I do that, a little bit of white. 
wait. And normally I would not want to go too light. Oh yeah, I'm off the screen here. I'm going a little bit light here. And so it's getting pink, which is something I'd really want to avoid. But uh, on a like a reflective metal, it kind of works. And I have to admit, Eric, I'm getting a little bit loose. I'm like, all right, I want to get done. Yeah. Yeah, my wheels have uh, safely fallen off a while ago. And here I, I'm seeing reflective, and now I'm I'm going lighter on this too. You know what? It's just too dark. I don't know if that's gonna work. Is what it is. All right. I think it. You know what? It's coming together. It looks good. You are, you know, like that stomach looks great, and the the difference between the the light and the. Uh, the background color behind it. You really got that. That's something I lost just because I kind of lost my picture a little bit in here, but yeah, I think the, um, I think just starting off with the right wash and just everything just builds from there. Yeah. Um, that part definitely worked better. Yeah, that's just absolutely amazing, David. Those scales are so so good. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate it. They both have a Travis Charre feel. Oh man, if only. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's lid is so loud. So I'm using yellow ochre, red and white uh, for the skin. I actually put a little bit of blue in there, just a tiny little bit to kill it back for my first layer because I, I thought it was a little bit too, it stood out a little too much. And now I'm going with more of a pure mix, a little lighter. So no blue. I feel like it's it's a little light. It's just so cool to me, David, how your sketch just transformed into that. Uh, well, it's amazing. Just you know, you can you can take a sketch and just absolutely just transform into something like that. Looking real, real good. Thank you very much.
Yeah, I've totally lost the highlight of that glove. It did not work out like I thought it would. I can try fade it a bit, but I'll try that. Just need to fix the A. Drawing a face is one thing. Coloring it and painting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little different. It's true. Paint so dry. I'm thinking I'm picking up paint. I'm not.
I'm out for uh, Rich Warrior. I'm out for the night. I'll have to tweak mine a bit, but I have to put the youngest down for the night. Looking good, David. I think yours looks like Glenn Fabry. That's a good good compliment, Eric. Yours looks like Alex Horley. I do not know who that is, sadly. Embarrassingly. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Seriously. He's an Italian painter. He's very influenced by Simon Bisley. Oh, he, cool. yeah, he's very, very good. David, how do I rescue this glove? Uh, go over the whole thing with a lizard and crimson. That's that's what I was thinking. Yeah, like the whole thing. Okay. Um, you know, I was gonna put the I was gonna put the that same color of his um, white suit, quote unquote, into the shield here, but I'm, I almost like that sh showing through the uh, wash on the shield. I'm not, I'm, not being, I'm sorry. I hit my camera with my forehead. <laughs> I've done that a few times tonight. Should I paint it in the same day, or should I just leave it with the wash? Um, the, the what? The shield. It looks it looks kind of cool with the wash shining yeah, through. Yeah, actually, I, I like it. The shield looks good. I, the glove, yeah, I would just go with like a thin layer of alizarin crimson. Okay, cool. Thing, just to kind of darken it. Part of the mistake I made was the pencil was the highlight and it's got this horrible <coughs> the pencil shining through a bit too much. <laughs> Paradox G. Well, I was in here an hour ago. They did not look like this. Yeah, it changes quite a bit towards the end. Everyone, uh, Kevin Mandeville, everyone should definitely go back to the beginning of the stream just to see the absolute magic that's happening here. David's drawing of Cap had me impressed. Now my jaw is permanently on the floor. Absolutely. Uh, well, thank you. Man, I need to do something about the opening and closing of the cap caps. Oh. Yeah, it seems like you took from the last painting, David, of, yeah. black, of black and just absolutely improved. Like, I didn't think it was possible, but uh, well, it, looks, this, it looks crazy good. Well, thank you. I'm kind of losing a few things here and there, to be honest, I feel like. But it's uh, part of it is I know we can't be here all night, so I'm trying to right, right. through a little bit. I'm gonna have to open up my uh, paints and stuff inside a pillow so I don't make a sound. It, you were ridiculously sensitive about a can, can opening. I'm sorry? You were ridiculously sensitive about a paint cap opening. <laughs> so loud. Oh, that was a mistake. Uh. 
Okay. <laughs> Uh, good night, the term of reckoning. Thank you.
<laughs> Aussie Perez. Eric's cap reminds me of my little brother's collectible vintage action figures <laughs> that he would tell me to stop touching. I always played with him while he was at school. Awesome. <laughs> you know, I was actually thinking the other day, I had a Captain America figurine as a kid. Man, I loved that thing. And uh, it just disappeared off the face of the earth. I don't know where it went. You have a little brother? No. <laughs> no. Thanks, Dave. That looks incredible. Thank you. I lost my pencil again. <laughs> Paul Essenson, now you can make a whole comic like this. Man. Oh, yeah. Uh, no time at all. <laughs> I, I really thought, oh, yeah, this is like so fast. I could do this in no time at all. And then you actually do it a little bit and you run into a few pitfalls. It could get fast. I'll say that. And, you know, this is, uh, yeah, this has not been the easiest thing in the whole world. I gotta say. All right. This is the part here, which you're brave. <laughs> with, uh, I got nothing to lose. With no frisket or anything. <laughs> Mommy. Are you going to do any? Oh, you have some Fresnel lighting already. Nice, some perfect lighting.
What's more difficult, comic art or illustration arts? It depends on your skill set, I think. Uh, illustration art requires that you can paint and you know it's a lot of skills that most comic artists and i mean i certainly don't have i'm trying to learn it uh so that makes it incredibly difficult but i find most illustrators don't have the ability to tell a story with pictures and there's a, a lot of skills that go into that so it's it's not really such an easy comparison i guess they both have their challenges Josh wins. Got to wake up early for work tomorrow, but I'm mesmerized by this. No regrets. Yeah, there we go. Well, thank you for coming and watching for a while with us. Hopefully you can catch yeah. some of the rest of it later on. Yeah, I definitely want to see people um, tag that on in Instagram. What was that tag that we supposed to use? That was Al was it Al, Al Padrino who mentioned it? Yeah, it was. Uh... Yeah, Al Padrino, if you're still here, I think I saw you here. Yeah, you're here. What is that tag? Should be easy enough for us to go back and find. I mean, we'll just go through yeah. a thirty Finch hours. Flock, that's it. Finch flock fine art. There we go. <laughs> I love there it. We, okay. So that's what you need to use, Dave, when you post it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, you well, Adamus. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. <clears throat> well, yeah, Dave makes LOL. Yeah, Dave makes everyone feel bad as you use the big brush to outline. <laughs> yeah, that's a d very dexterous hand. Well, I missed a bunch of places too, but.
lost my black colored pencil somewhere. Oh, I put it in the, I put it where it goes. Yeah, that happened to me. I actually have three of them here just in case. <laughs> it's a surefire way to lose it. Jose, then uh, I'll just say Jose. How about that? Hot from Mexico, mind blowing art. Well, thank you very much, Jose. El Padrino, acrylic dries fairly quick. Yeah, it sure does, and especially when glazing, it uh, it can still catch you un unawares, but it, yeah, it dries pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a good, yeah, very good question. 62 lefty blues. How do you know when to stop? Yeah, that's hard. Uh, once, once the whole thing falls apart yeah. and you realize you should have quit an hour ago, that's when you give up and go to bed. Dave's transcending, yeah, for sure. <laughs> huh. El Padrino says it should be in the Louvre. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, what's up and so I'm like thinking out loud I guess <laughs> nothing <laughs> nothing at all Jeffrey T sheesh four hours looking great yeah we were guessing three but we were wrong um, it's it's very yeah it's very difficult to uh Put a set time on it. Uh, Matthew Fuentes, David Finch. I'm not very good at painting. Then shows up with awesome painting. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Matthew. David should just do a series of paintings for Marvel or DC covers. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely.
yeah, I'm really looking for uh, looking forward to folks um, using that tag on Instagram and seeing everyone's results. Yeah, for sure. But it doesn't have to be just from this evening. I mean, just uh, you know, just using this technique or practicing whatever. Just yeah, use that tag. It'll be good to see. The scales look so good. Thank you. They look tactile. They were a headache to do. And I didn't really know how to light them, to be honest. I, I was a little lost with where the light would exactly catch on those things. I really had trouble. Uh, Dave and Eric, if you post this on Instagram, you should tag Ariel Olivetti. I bet he would love these. Yeah, it's a good idea. I don't know how to tag somebody. Just do at and then Ariel Olivetti. It'll auto. It'll uh. It'll bring it up, and you can tag him on it. Just okay. in your description, you can tag him on it. Speed bag, box, speed bag boxer. Say that 10 times. David, I think this is the best piece I've ever seen from you. Oh, wow. Man. Thank you. Very nice of you to say. It got a little rushed in the end, I got to admit. Yeah, you kind of hit a wall, right? And then it's... Yeah, well, I... Got a lot of work to do in the morning too. Yeah, kind of yeah. in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh. <sighs> I think I have a meeting pretty early tomorrow as well. I love how that came out. I think, uh, I think the A on his head could be a little bright. Like there are some places in the white where it could go a little brighter, you know. Mm -hmm. But the A on his head for sure, definitely. But yeah, you know, I, um, this you blue threw me off bad. You got a little bit, I know, and uh, yeah, I started rushing in the end a little bit, so sorry about that. But I, uh, are you gonna finish some of the the places where it still needs a like just like the A and a couple little highlights like that? Because I mean, that mask looks great, like the light on his cheek and his nose. I I think it really really looks good. Yeah, I can use a bit of white pencil, but yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, this was a lot of fun. Adam Wessel, my new favorite person on the face of the earth, said, I'm willing to bet one of the hardest parts about this painting process for Dave is weathering all the compliments. Ah, uh, <laughs> well, thanks. I'll take that one. Very nice. Uh, Devanesh, I'm sorry, Devanesh Sharma uh, said, Please, sir, more videos on anatomy. Absolutely, yes. Definitely coming up. It's helped a little. You know what? Keep going a little bit. Let's. I, I don't want to just stop. I want to. So let's. Yeah, actually, that's looking great. And afterwards, I'll come in with the black again. It'll really pop. What I love about when you uh, go with a pencil over the over the mat, just the graininess just looks so cool. Yeah, yeah, it really has a, It plays well. There we go. It's a little bit better. El Padrino says you both killed it tonight. It was such an awesome stream. Thank you so much, El Padrino, and Go Tickler <laughs> says Dave, you rock with. Uh, can swear on this channel. We're a family friendly channel over here. 
Adam, Adam Russell. Russell, no pressure if we're just all watching me nicely, so they... Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, I will say that my nerves now versus the beginning of the stream, I'm a lot calmer, so... <laughs> oh, yeah. And that glove, actually, with the uh, alizarin over it really yeah yeah together. that saved it for sure trent early has a super chat thank you so much trent finch and frazetta both should have paintings in the louvre that's in all seriousness well thank you <laughs> thank you very much i really appreciate it it's very nice of you to say i <laughs> highly doubt it'll be in the louvre anytime soon that's all right even dave's captain america is watching eric says jordan oh you know what shoot this is the problem Yikes, Rich Ware. Uh, Dave and Eric, I don't know if you caught what I said about Bill Sienkiewicz colored pencil technique, but if you wanted to blend smoother, use lighter fluid. <laughs> it eats away the wax. <laughs> that so sounds like a Bill Sienkiewicz <laughs> technique. Absolutely bananas crazy. <laughs> Always a learning experience. Great job, guys. Thanks, for mine. Sure. Ooh, Sebastian Adrian Cruz, 1.2K likes. The most wow. successful live stream from your channel, Dave. We've made history. Well, wow. that's I, that's I haven't great. been watching, yeah, I haven't been watching the viewer count or anything. Yeah, I, I kind of, I, I have to say, I, I figured for sure this one was going to not really do as well, which is fine. It's, you know, I really wanted to do it as painting. It was a blast, so I was kind of okay with that, but that's that's amazing. That's really great. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's everyone. great. Kevin Mandevil says, never mind the Louvre. What do I need to get I need to do to get my I can't talk. Help me, Eric. What do I need to do to get these on the wall, on my wall? Um yeah, we're gonna have to maybe put them up on the website. Did you enjoy this one, Dave? Oh, it looks like it. Yeah, I did. I there were parts I absolutely did not enjoy. But you know what? Every painting I do, look at this. This is how it goes. I, I go through a period where I just feel like, oh no, it's, it's all falling apart, and you know, then it kind of, it kind of settles, and it's it's like I need a bit of a, um, a, a, enough to go off of, and then I can start to play back and forth. Don't you feel like that, Eric? Yeah, yeah, it hits a. Uh... Yeah, it hits a point where you're like, why did I even start kind of thing? But yep. then um, you just got to keep working it. You just got to keep, you know, um, re reinforcing the, you know, the part. I mean, I find jumping around help helps a lot. If I'm really struggling in one area, I'll just stop and go to another one. And then eventually you hit all those spots and then it starts coming together a bit better. Yeah. But it's like you said, I mean, it's... Yeah. I'm sorry. Maybe, Oh, sorry, Eric. Go ahead. No, okay. I think maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. Okay, Speedback Boxer says, Dave, uh, could the shield have more of a shine to it? Would that be too much? It would not be too much. I stopped because I'm not using reference, and I really, I would, I think, I actually had a picture of reference that I I, I had on my computer kind of ready to go uh, with uh, a shield, but, you know, in the heat of the moment, I just, yeah, I, never got there so i think if this was something that like a cover or something like that I, I would have the time to be able to stop and really work on the shield and you know get those details sorry eric that's all right my sister asks eric if you were to paint in the background what color shade would you use i don't know i'd probably just go darker with um uh, what was the color you got you, you made me get burnt umber right i'd probably use that a bunch yeah and the reason why i'd want to go darker with the background is so i can add rim lighting you can't really do that here it just wouldn't work like if i were to take my color pencil actually and make the dark side uh rim light it just won't work too well yeah um, because with the background being light it, it definitely yeah works. yeah so the rule light on dark dark on light right if yeah. i were to put light here this this value is not um it's not deep enough um yeah so it's light next to light and it breaks and that's what will that's what will break a painting yeah barbarian says now i want to have a try with paints which is that's what that's what it's all about that's great yeah it really is a blast and it's frustrating too and uh trent early has a super chat for five dollars thank you so much trent he says also 
Thank you, Dave, for painting this amazing cap for me. <laughs> so kind of you. Uh, LOL, joking, of course. Thanks for the stream. You are the best out there. Thank you so much, Trent. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you all. Eric, do you want to keep going with yours a little bit more, or you want to wrap oh, it up? I'm good. No, I'm good. All right. Um, I know it's a, it's, it's, it's a pretty long one, but it's been an absolute pleasure, an absolute blast. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. I hope everyone else has as well. And, um, uh, and I hope everyone's gonna gonna work on their own paintings and and again use that uh, what Finch Flock Fine Art. It'll be it'll be good to just browse their tag. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and take a picture of this and put it up on Instagram and I'll use the tag and I'd love to see what you guys are doing. I'm very curious to see what Russ Hicks had come out of it. I know like, it's it's a tough go when you haven't really done it. So I, I know it's uh, it's a challenge. Um, and uh, Jeff Wheeler says, Dave, I think the shield looks great. It looks very painterly. Thank you very much. I mean, it could there could always be more. It started getting a little slapped in there. <laughs> I'll have to admit. All right. Thank you, everyone, so much. Let me, you know, at least uh, there. Um, thank you, everyone, so much. This was an absolute blast. Thank you so much, Eric, for coming and, and introducing this uh, technique and uh, doing such an awesome painting on the stream. I know it was a, a scary experience not having ever done anything in front of people like this. This was scary for me too. I mean, um, <laughs> I'd never painted in front of anybody before, so I really thought this might fall apart. Deep LA art is here. Uh, so yeah, it's good to see you at the end. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here. I'll see you guys on Monday. That's, that's not that far away. So everybody have a great weekend and, uh, See you soon. Thank you. See you, everyone.